Welcome to Las Vegas, and this is a GG33 production. Today, we got an all-star cast. Let's get it started. First, Pearl. She's been everywhere. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Making his podcast debut, Debru. What's up, brother? What's up, brother? Glad to be here. Appreciate it. And last but not least, Malik Obama. This is basically American royalty over here. How are we doing today, brother? Not bad. Pretty good. So, you, listen, guys. We got an all-star cast here. I'm going to go right into it, man. Um, when we look at what's going on in today's society, what is the biggest freaking issue? To me, it's feminism. Pearl? To me, it's women voting, which is a result of feminism. Uh, yeah, exactly. I think the root of all evil was when they just gave us whatever we wanted, you know? And now it's like you have all these politicians that can't get elected unless the women have a say. And it's like... Democratic. Women, Democrats. Yeah. Well, that's well, that's what... I, neither of them. I've even talked to Republicans that say they lost an election because they, they need to get this... Women are swing voters. Or men... It's funny. Men are more loyal even in party. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, we can't even vote loyally. <laughs> like, so it's like, they're like, let's let the women be happy. Let's give them whatever they want and let's let them vote. And that was the root of all evil. I keep telling people, yeah. I keep telling people their 19th Amendment was way worse than 19. Take, yeah, take that shit away. Take that shit away immediately. Zabru, what's your thoughts on feminism? Man, I think the I think we're looking at the peak of the sexual inversion. I think men are becoming the gender lines are extremely blurred. Men are obviously becoming more like women. Women are becoming more like men. I could chop this up for an hour specifically on the just the the things I've ascertained about it. But yeah, the culture is 100 percent. The gender lines are very muddied right now. And I think that women are experiencing a lot of the things that men have experienced over the past hundred years. Malik, uh, you live in Kenya and America. Obviously, America is the best country in the world. No but 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 when you come here, you must see some crazy shit that you don't see in Kenya, brother. Yeah, it's like uh, Star Trek, deep 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 <laughs> deep state. <laughs> you know, so crazy yeah. over yeah, here. Huh? You know, I'm telling you. But uh, right now, you know, the main thing is to, to keep it real. You know, and uh, call it as it is. You know, this blurry stuff. You can't be all that you want to be because either you're a man or a woman, and that's it. But you can't have like you don't know what you are, you know, so I'm, I'm into like the reality, you know, and that's how it is. Your, your brother never would have got elected without the female vote. I think, it, what was it, Pearl, about 61% of females voted for Obama? Oh, I don't know, but I mean, I, I, I heard that freaking every election would have been Republican won if we just let the men, just let the men well, vote. That's the whole point. Know, because like, this is what'll happen. This is what they'll do. They'll be like, Oh, here's a video of a 12-year-old girl that can't get an abortion. This sad story. And we're so stupid. We just start running to the polls. We're like, oh, my God. Because this women. a 12-year-old. We need to go vote. Because women can be easily ma emotionally manipulated. Yeah. If I was running the government, the brute, I'd want women voters, too. I don't too think, easy to I, manipulate. You know, sometimes I want to run for an office just to take that way and step down because women shouldn't be in politics they shouldn't be in politics <laughs> no. why would you want a woman deciding it, it, for who world war three like why do you want a woman with the nuke button she's gonna she's gonna get her period and then be like oh my god well how about that that, that country said something about me world war three well would, would it be okay for a woman to be elected if she is going through menopause because you know i remember you know, when I was younger, I, I, I felt I, I used to see judges quite often when I was young, especially with my 20s. And a lot of these judges were females. And I was always thinking, man, I hope it's not that time in the month because this bitch is going to ring me up. <laughs> and, you know, I was I was, you know, you see like one guy get rung up before you, another guy get rung up before well, you. And then you're like, uh oh, when, in, when we're in menopause, we're crazy, too. It's like, you've never seen like a woman going through menopause. Like they're, oh, it's like I, they lose their minds. My, my mother, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, no, take, I just think, I just think the root of all evil was when they said to women that you can, you're equally as capable of making decisions as men. I think that was the root of all evil because it was a lie. It's not true. Um, Malik, in Kenya, are these women running around demanding this and that like they do in Entitled America? Not before, but right now, yes, because now we're in the 
this new age. And oh, the, so they're, they're Americanized yeah. over there, too. They're, they're trying to. They're oh, trying they to. want to get their bag from the man, too, over there yeah, now, huh? No, culturally, traditionally, and um, the customs out there won't allow it. So it's like unnatural, and it's something really, really um, strange. But the piles, all these um, uh, in World Bank and uh, whoever they are who's mm -hmm. trying to run the show, you know, is trying to make everybody, you know, toe the line. And, and make homosexuality legal, which is... Oh, that ain't going to happen uh, in Africa, <laughs> is it? Yeah. That ain't going to happen in Africa. I'll, I'll go there. Malik, I will go to your country and make and protest against it. I'll be like, listen, when it comes to uh, homosexuality, don't listen to the white man. Mm. Don't ever listen to white men on that garbage because that's what they promote. I, I honestly thought 10 years ago it was a white man disease. I really thought that that's what it was because it was just spreading. But now I understand it's an agenda and they start pushing this stuff in schools. Malik, let me ask you something. Um, how many wives are you allowed to have in Kenya? In Africa, there's no limit. You know. What would you say? You can have as many as you want. So you could have four, five, six, seven? As many as you want. That's just a traditionally custom. According to oh. custom... That's how it is, but in Islam, you can only have four. I see. Okay, so, so when it comes down to you, how many wives have you had, sir? It's a bit personal. I'm not gonna say. Okay. They come and go. They come and go. <laughs> <laughs> they now, come and go. Gary, I've been rotating a theory about homosexuality that I think is kind of avant-garde. Not too many people have explored this, but I, I genuinely think this is true. I think the onslaught of homosexuality is stemming from the dating market is so steep. It's so competitive now to lock down a truly good woman. What is the only community in the world who will accept you for who you are, no matter how disgusting, <laughs> portly, fat, corpulent, doesn't matter how ugly and grotesque you are, you can get in the gay community without any credentials, you don't need any resume, you will find someone to get laid. So you can be the most grotesque loser on planet Earth and mm -hmm. the gay community will accept you. There's no standards in the gay community. And I do believe a lot of men are abandoning their posts and going AWOL and going into the gay community simply because it's that tough on the heterosexual side. You're telling me you think that there's a lot of gay men in the world right now because they can't get some pussy? 100%. I think they're exploring, I think they're porno brain, first of all, I think porn absolutely is a gateway to homosexuality because your dopamine is so torched and so fried. I mean, look at Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen was banging hookers oh every day God. for years. He, he could no longer get an orgasm unless he started sucking dick. That's, that's literally the gateway. So I do think men are abandoning their posts and being very experimental in this community because this community will accept you for who you are no matter what kind of blemishes you have on your record. In the heterosexual community, we know there's power dynamics. You cannot escape being somebody as a man to get a good wife. Yeah, well, you even see it in prison. Like I've seen, 100%. I've seen interviews of guys that said they were straight when they went into prison and they adapt. I mean, like arguably, sex is a need for men. So it's if they don't get it from women, it's like defense mechanism. Yeah, I, like I wonder what percent of gay people would be gay if they had like the opportunity to date a model. I think a lot of people in today's society might be gay because they were raised by single mothers and they didn't have any masculine energy around well, them. I think, I think that's probably the biggest thing because if you look at it, oh, there's so many more single mothers today and I believe there's a lot more gay people today. It looks like a correlation to me. Obviously, they're still pushing this garbage in the school system, brainwashing people. And by the way, women bought that up hook, line, and sinker. We're just dummies. We're idiots. That's yeah. why the government loves you. Yeah, like, and, I, and I, I've tried to, like, like not come to this conclusion until I just saw the things, like, as a collective we were, like, voting for. I was like, we have had so much choice in the last hundred years. We've, like, had more choice. We could be anything. Mm -hmm. And we've chosen to be whores. Whores. One out of 25 of us under 35 are on OnlyFans. And I didn't... Shut I didn't, only and, fans and down. And I didn't even include women that accept like um instagram sex only only imagine this and zerka brought this up on a podcast only four percent of us are virgins on our wedding days <laughs> all we had to do all we had to do was think wait till 22 21 go get like a saudi prince you're a virgin 
But none of us thought of that. We're idiots. Oh, you could have got a big idiots. bad. I know. I didn't think of it. Could you I imagine, like, I girl? Know. I heard. I heard something. Keep, keep your legs closed, and <laughs> you get know. paid, ladies. I know. <laughs> I, I heard, and it's like we're dummies. I heard something that made me laugh recently. They said any any time a woman sleeps with a partner before marriage, that's her cheating on her future husband. I agree. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Um, it's all manufactured, you know, because naturally and traditionally, uh, people weren't just sleeping around. Not really, you know. You had to, you know, get married first. Well, well, and fornication mm. really is for married couples. Oh, well, what, what about uh, your brother Barack? Uh, I well, can't say. Well, was, was he a ladies' man before he got with Michelle? Yeah, well, when I first met him, he was with the. Uh, 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 Sheila. Sheila? Yeah, there's a lady called Sheila. So. Sheila sounds like a cartoon character. Uh, no, nah, she was a nice wasn't, lady. Wasn't that like some kind of like He-Man, She-Ra or something like that? I'm, I'm going flashback to the 80s. Nah, Sorry, just show my age. Some lady, so, you know, I guess. So she was a lady, though? She was a lady. Okay, she okay, lady, well, so. we're cooking now, so what else? Was? <laughs> she was, you know, that is like in the past, you know, so we're talking about past tense, you know. Yeah. Because right back, now, like it looks like, 1985. looks like she has a contract for as a lineman for the Chicago Bears. I haven't seen her in a long time. So that's What's the last time you saw Michelle? Michelle, 20, whew, when oh. was it, 2008. 2008? 2009. 2009? At the inauguration. Okay, yeah. you were at her wedding in 92. Yeah. And then you were over there in 2009. Yeah. In that 17 years, did she become a bodybuilder? Like, how did she put up, pick up, like, so much mass? You tell me. I don't know. Well, I mean, this strange. is your field, brother. How does a woman who, I mean, she looked like she was about 135, 140 pounds on her wedding date. How does she look like a linebacker now? Is that possible? Linebacker. Pro Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Urlacher, huh? She's got a 4-240. I mean, all, all jokes aside. I mean, that's a scary bitch. She's got a V well, taper. She keep, she keep Have you changing. seen the V taper? So she loses weight. She adds weight. So I don't know. She's just like amorphous. Is she uh, taking steroids, in your opinion? Be, 100%. Mean, I don't know. She's on anabolics, guaranteed. There's something going on there. I don't know what it is. She's, she's running the Holy Trinity. Yeah. HGH, DECA, little test base, little Anavar for why would breakfast. She, why would you do that? Doesn't that like, look bad? It's got to be some kind of cultural programming, right? Listen. That picture you showed me, and um, you know, we'll we'll put it up when we start doing clips uh, that you showed me of Michelle Obama at her wedding. Hmm. She looked like a woman to me. Yeah, she. She, she looked, looked like a straight woman. Yeah. When you met Michelle Obama in 1992, she looked like a woman, correct? Yes, yes she did. Yeah, she was felt. Hmm. I saw pictures of her. She was felt. She was live, walking through the room, petite. Yeah. Now her delts are bigger than mine. How how, how is that possible? It's not for a woman. It's not. A lot of strange things going on now. Maybe it's not her. Maybe it's somebody ah, else. Ah, okay. So is it possible in your um, opinion that the Michelle Obama we're seeing right now is not the same Michelle Obama that you saw in 1992? It could be anything because everything's staged now. now you didn't think World's a stage. Everything's staged now. You don't know what's real and what's not real. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I'm talking like Pearl talking about. Nobody knows, like, a woman, is, is this a real woman? You don't know if you're with a woman or with a man because the lines, are, you, you don't know. People well, I know. Change, I know because, because I checked. But see. Have, you, have you heard of that guy that was drugging women on dates by putting Viagra in their drinks just to make sure? <laughs> yeah, right now, what has the world come to? I know, I know. Uh, He's like, I just wanted to double really, check. Right now, you don't know what's going on. You know, you don't know. You do don't do know. you have transsexuals in Kenya? Shoes, yeah, one or two. I mean, <laughs> like they're there, but are they? They don't go around flaunting it. I see. So you don't have LGBT parades in Kenya? They're trying to do all that, but it's against the law. You know, so. Uh, Kenya is is it Kenya more of a Christian or a Muslim country? It's it's mixed. Mixed. It's mixed. You okay, got, so so the Christians are going to bend the knee like they do here in America to the. To, uh, I don't see the Muslims doing it. No, they're trying to brainwash everybody and try and get like this new world world order. The people are trying to control everything. They're trying to make things in such a way that you don't know what's whether it's, you can see it's a Pepsi, but they're trying to tell you it's a Coca Cola. 
You know. You're pretty politically correct, yeah. my bad. That's what they're trying to do. You know, they're playing and me messing around with everybody's mind. It's the power mm -hmm. of repetition. That's and what they did with COVID. To, if you try to be real and natural, they're trying to make that abnormal. So everything is like up. Oh, down. so if you have a family, yes. if you take care of your kids, yes. if you have a housewife that you take care of, that's abnormal. It's abnormal. You're the up one right that's right ah mm. see I, I i got it now yeah it all mm. makes sense now so they're trying to flip everything what, what your brother wants to do that's what he's doing he's like he's a he's like a what do you call an octopus you don't know <laughs> where he stands he's standing is you know he's trying to please everybody you know you can't go around pleasing everybody you got to make a stand you got to have a spine and your brother does not have a spine I don't think, no he's up to it you know whatever is going to make him you know uh uh stand out you know last time i talked to you in uh miami was around may of this year and i told you that i believe that um barack obama is going to start going after joe biden since that interview in may countless scandals with hunter biden and joe biden have been released to the press your brother's going for him but there is a body found right by obama his personal chef how does obama's personal chef die on martha's vineyard how does that happen you ever been there no i don't know like right now in hawaii hawaii is burning and i haven't heard him say a thing about it and that's where he was born oh so he don't give a f i don't think he does he's like just doing something out there and Trying to figure him out, and he's not the person that I knew. He's changed. Oh, well, when you hold ankles, that's what happens. Uh, DeBrute, let me ask you something. When I start saying that the personal chef for Barack Obama was found dead on Martha's Vineyard, what comes to your head? What, what, is it the Clintons sending messages to old boy? What do you think something like that is? Yeah, I mean, foul play immediately comes to mind, of course. Pearl? I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. See, this is this is exactly what we need. We need women to be like that. Oh, I don't know anything about politics. I don't care anything about <laughs> politics. If that happens, the world will be a much better place. I promise you that. Um, yeah, my only politics is women shouldn't vote. <laughs> That's my biggest politics, sorry. <laughs> you know, and I honestly... Let, let me ask you this, bro. If men go out there and say we will provide certain benefits for women hmm. do you think as a whole they'll give up their right to vote if say that you, you, it, no they'll, they'll give, no, no i don't think we'll ever give it up because we already get a bunch of rights we already really get a bunch of privileges we're paid to be single mothers yeah. <laughs> we're we're paid to leave marriages we also get paid if we stay married it's like and california don't even have to get married six months yeah. living in the same place you can start suing the guy for child support yeah no, exactly so it's like that? it's like what what more do we need we have everything you can go work you can go not work you can go live off the government you can go live off a of man it's like what what else do we need and what do we still do? We whine. We whine. And that's what I realized. I'm like, we just are big whiners. Like, we just are never happy. I don't know why. <laughs> you can never satisfy a woman. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I it just, just seems to be our nature. I don't know. I just did a video on this. Corporate land is dominated by women. It's done. Phone it in. Man, I don't think job, the, the job space is even a viable market for men anymore. I truly don't. I think it's all dominated by women. Corporate, corporate Corporations are headed in that direction. But my point in stating that is that there's two, there's really only two sectors left of men, in my opinion, who can even find a wife. And it's, it's, this is controversial, but it's losers and the rich. Losers have access to women because, in my opinion, uh, there's a low anxiety. You know what I mean? Like, there's a certain income spread right now that is very hard for men in the dating market. And that spread, in my opinion, is between like 140 to 250,000 a year income. Those guys are invisible. They're, they're not rich, but they have the kind of jobs that are just hard enough to where there's no women around. So they're, they're having such a tough time. And a lot of these guys- Computer I, geeks? 100%, the tech guys. And mm -hmm. I have access to this market because these are the guys who follow me on Twitter. And they all lament to me over and over again that as soon as they got on their feet and got these higher paying jobs, 
their dating market completely dried up. It's drier than the Sahara. They cannot find women. When they were losers, they said they were cleaning up. And I think it's Are they going for higher quality women now, I, though? I think they are. Oh, yeah. I, I think that, that's probably why. That's probably why. But I do think that in this culture that's inverted, the ambition of a man who works out routinely is super shredded, jacked, rich, it's, it yells anxiety. And I think that that is what's putting these women off subliminally. I think that um, women like low anxiety men, which is why I think the loser archetype, for, for whatever reason, does do well in this kind of market. Is It's only the loser if he's hot, though, right? You're telling an ugly loser? Yes. Bitches? That's 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 true. Oh, okay. That's true. Um, and then, but then they talk about how, like, gold diggers, and I'm like, how do you bash a gold digger? In my eyes, that makes zero sense because you mean to tell me that a woman likes you for something that you earned rather than the way that you were born? Like, that's how it should be. A woman should be into you based on what you've earned in this life. So the whole women coming after your money. Are they going to be loyal though? If a if you find a woman when you actually have a big bag a high percentage of them are not going to be loyal. If you find a woman when you're broke, you bond together, you grow together, she's probably not going to cheat on you when you have the bag. But that's if you take the nerd route. If you take the nerd route like Elon, Elon's worth $230 billion, can't lock down a woman. Still jerking off about Grimes. <laughs> True. But I do think life experience is what bleeds over. To, look, and, and I've said this on Spaces before, I do believe the single thing that a woman wants the most in a man subliminally, and I've never heard anybody else say this but me, I think ultimately a woman wants to know that she cannot fool or befuddle you. She can't pull one over on you. You see her coming a mile away, you put it in check, she, she has to know for sure she cannot pull the wool over your eyes on anything. You know when she's lying. You know when she's being sneaky. You just know. You can telegraph it. That only comes from life experience. That doesn't come from business. A lot of these rich crypto kids who are nerds who became very wealthy, they're struggling because they skipped the life part. You got to be in the trenches as a man, suffering pain. You got to learn, you got to learn life. You got to get your heart broken a couple of times. That's the root of a man. Once you kind of build that scar tissue and you have that experience, it translates over and you become a gamer. Then first, it's first you get played, then you, you become a player, correct? 100%. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that seems logical. Um, Pro, anything to say? No, I agreed with him. Um, I would have said guidance, but it's like the same thing. It's like the like, same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, no, because when, when you are looking at a guy, you kind of want to see it's like, can, can he guide me in the direction? Yeah. 100%. And I think a lot of these younger guys don't understand that you have to teach all the time. Like that mm. being in a long term relationship is the most, it's life on hardcore mode. It is the hardest well, difficulty set. And especially like with us, like a, a bunch of women, like we've never, like most women aren't, weren't raised to be wives right like mm -hmm. even even women that like came from two-parent households it's like what percent of men lead relationships what percent of people have traditional relationships you know there's an entire and like what i think a third of people were born in single parent households now uh, depend, or, depending on the demographics much higher yeah yeah depending on the demographics no, but that, much higher yeah but so that's what i mean when i say guidance because half of, half of guys don't even like they don't even know that you know no they can't yeah. even get that part down at all yeah don't communicate, don't sit down, don't teach. You have to explain things. The, the computer has done a lot to destroy men's ability to actually know how to talk to women. 100%. I, ha I remember um, you know, having get togethers in Vegas, inviting a whole bunch of people, and you would see women sitting at the bar <coughs> and guys playing video games. And I'm like, you know, I'm married and everything, so I can't really do anything, but I'm looking <laughs> at these women like, I'm sorry, I feel bad for you. I don't know what else to tell you. You know, playing video games when you have women around who are basically trying to, you know, get to know you and stuff like that. I think these guys don't know how to talk to women. And, you know, 10, 15 years ago, I would have laughed at the idea of a coach that tells, you know, guys how to, you know, get women. I would have laughed at that hitch concept. Now? It's a viable market. Well, but yeah, we also lost community, I think. You know what I mean? Like people used to have like friend groups or you'd meet like the guy down the hall. You know the like, you know your neighbors and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So like, you know, maybe a guy that didn't know how to I talk to I hate my neighbor by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know like I, I don't know any of the neighbors in my building or in London. Like I don't know any I, of them. I I know all the neighbors that have a Trump sign in their <laughs> front yard. Those are the ones I go and I say, "How you doing?" Those are the ones I want to break bread with. Um and basically what you have to understand is a lot of people are very stupid 
I'm just gonna flat out say it. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world, people are very ignorant. And one of the biggest reasons is because people don't get breastfed anymore. Fact. Mm -hmm. When kids get breastfed, their IQs go up nine to 10% higher. So when the women actually stayed at home, when men were men and they actually had enough money to provide for the family, all of a sudden these kids had higher IQs. People wonder why all these people are stupid now. No one's getting breastfed. And then, you oh. have, and then you have tenacious life forms like myself that can get half and half and still turn out all right. Oh, there you go, brother. But oh, like, you're the it's, exception to the rule. It's 100% man. true, though. I think the breastfeeding, breast, the breastfeeding thing is insane to me because how did Gerber's, like that is the greatest marketing campaign ever. How did Gerber's hijack the female amygdala and, <laughs> and convince them We're dummies. that fucking Zog Slop is more potent and powerful and nourishing than your own breast. That's a marketing campaign. Women got bamboozled in what, the 70s, 80s? That's that's just completely- Before that. <laughs> don't, yeah, they completely <laughs> abdicated their feminine instinct to Gerber's. Yeah. We're, that makes zero fucking sense to me how the power and forces in play on that. I mean, we pick, we pick husbands, I'm sorry, through horoscope signs. I mean, that's how I did it. Look at we look at magazines. Look, at, I, I I think what you do is a little more complex than what the average chick does. Oh well, yeah, I do. But, but Pearl, that's they a good point. Astrology. It's like I'm just saying, like <clears throat> this is you know not character, mm -hmm. not not like what to, it's it's. You know, it was amazing, Pearl. When I asked uh, first started getting into numerology astrology, um, I went to all the top numerologists, all the top astrologers in 2002, and there was a common theme: woman. Divorced three, four times. Uh, and I kept asking these women, if you're so good at astrology, why'd you get divorced three or four times? Oh, uh, people grow apart. But you didn't see that coming? And, and, you know, just to put it in perspective, I've been married for almost 20 years. So obviously I knew what the hell I was doing. But other people, they just don't. I mean, you know, Malik, it, when it comes to your country, are men having similar issues like they do in America? They can't find a good woman? I mean, obviously, you don't have that problem. No, in Africa, uh, traditionally, it's arranged, you know. So, like, by the time the woman gets to the age of puberty, she's married off. So we're off like a cow. So it's not like, you know, any, any, any woman who is not married after that age is just whoring around, you know. So wait a second. If a woman isn't married by what age? 20, 22? Well, well, when she starts, you know, like, experiencing... Uh, you know, she can Period? give birth, yeah. Well, they can sometimes give birth at 13, 14. What's yeah, that? Yeah, so they married off because... At 13, 14? Uh, no, I'm just saying that because, like, what it is, the culturally over there, if a woman gives birth, birth, like she was saying that most women now are not virgins, you know. <laughs> They've been sleeping around, you know. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, to get a good woman who hasn't been sleeping around... You know, you have to catch them before they, they, they get, get, you know, get going. Yeah. So uh, they get married off. Do you early. think? Do you think when that's? They, a, do you they, think that's a superior system than what is going on here in America? I think so. Yes. Less yes. divorce. And they don't get divorced because at that time, you know, at that age, she's not, you know, corrupted. So she's going to go into the marriage, you know, ready for it. Pearl, are you looking for an arranged marriage? <laughs> you know what's funny? When I was younger, I would always say that my parents could do an arranged marriage. They never took me up on it, though. <laughs> um, Gary, I actually want someone to challenge me on this because this ahead. is something I've been thinking about. Go ahead. Um, I've been begging for someone to challenge me on this one. Um, the whole body count thing, I get it. And it's fundamental form. I understand why it's atrocious, right? Mm -hmm. However, I do think women are by far the more malleable sex. It's not even close. I think women that are damaged, abused, traumatized, et cetera, I think have a much higher chance of restoration than men who are traumatized. And the reason I think that is because anytime you see a woman get into a relationship with an extremely powerful male that she respects and reveres, all of that slutty behavior literally disappears. I've seen it over and over again. I do believe women can be restored by powerful men. Um, Why would they want to? Why, why would you want to restore a fucking whore when, you know, there's so many other women who basically haven't been through the trenches like they have? As a man, um, I would be repulsed if a woman had a high body count. 
Repulsed, yes, but I think part of the male instinct of wielding that power is understanding that you can actually take a broken woman. And I'm not talking about being fucking Captain save ho That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about finding a woman that you want to invest in, because let's be real. And here's why I'm coming to this conclusion. Mm-hmm. If you look at every wealthy athlete, even the billionaires, why is no, Why are none of the people who have the means and the power, why are none of them exploring this utopia of virgins? I don't see that in practice. I see it in theory. In the real world that I live in, all the athletes are competing with all the Instagram whores that have a huge amount of body counts because those women are experienced. They're fun. They're more attractive. It seems to me that all the ex- excruciating... Are they marrying those bitches, though? They're not marrying them. There but they're, but they're, where is the virgin utopia that everyone's They're, they're not about? around anymore. That's what I'm saying. They're just not around. That's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. So like he said in the beginning it's almost like you do it young or not at all seems like these days fair enough like you get married young that's why i always say if churches aren't actively like setting people up they're really just pushing promiscuity because what's the option most people like most people aren't going to wait till what 21 Mm -hmm. 22 like so if you're not pushing early marriage what's the other alternative who who waits till that age? but that's my question we as we still have to play the game right (laughs) As men, we still have to play the game. We're dealt cards right now. This is the landscape. This is the culture. What do we do? We got to play our hand. Right. And even 100 years ago, 85% of women said they were virgins. So, like, even if they're lying, right? And, like, it's two out of three. That's still the majority, right? So that's even because if you these it, women were but, shamed. Right. They were I know, shamed. I know. I know. But I, I'm saying, like, like, nowadays, only 4% of women are virgins. So, he's saying adapt to the market. 100%. Like, so I'm saying, like, 96% of us would have been thrown out 100 years ago. Okay. Like that's how that's how crazy like everything's like. I mean, I I, I would have been burned at the stake for being a numerologist astrologer two hundred years ago. Dude, you you know, would have been impaled on antler bones. Hey, brother, (laughs) (laughs) in fucking ancient Greece. So would I. Yeah, it's you know as much bullshit as we talk about as as much as everything is wrong in the world. Let's face it, guys. Since the nineteen forties, humanity's had been on a good run, man. Humanity's been on a good run. We've actually had more best wealth. Best run ever. Best, you know, we've had a lot of wealth. And the problem is these women now have their own money. And because they have their own money, they believe they don't need a man. And once in their, when they're in their 20s, 30s, that might work. But once they hit that 40, and I can't tell you the number of women I've given numerology readings to who were, you know, in their 40s, 45, they have no kid, obviously the cat at the house. And they keep telling me I got bamboozled. I got bamboozled. And what I'm trying to tell you young women out there is don't get played. You just saw what they did with You just saw how they played the world with COVID. Never trust the government, especially if you're a woman, because they just want to destroy your life. They want you to be a leech on society. They want you to have a whole bunch of kids out of wedlock because those kids are not going to have masculine figures. And what happens when kids don't have masculine figures? They become criminals because no one checks them when they're young. 85%, 85% of rapists were raised by single mothers. You fucking feminists wanna talk about shit? You're the ones who are fucking bringing the, the fucking rapists. You're doing this. You know, that's what I seriously, I went for months. I was like, is there anything women are better at? And I came to this conclusion that men must just be superior beings because we're more likely to kill the infants and the elderly. That's literally the one thing we're supposed to be is nurturing. I couldn't believe it. And then I found out all the world's problems basically happen when we raise kids. So I was like, unless we're under the authority of men, we just kind of suck. I can't disagree with anything. Like, it's like, I mean, I'm not saying we can't be great, but it's literally only under the authority of men. Because like, what, what happens when we're left to our own devices? We just suck. It's 100% true. That's why I've said ambition, I think, is a feminine trait because women are the ambitious ones. Women need to project their authority onto a tall, charismatic, handsome man, right? That's that's the archetype to in order to push their agenda, right? In a common household now, even guys with money, it's the women coming to the husband, hey, I wanted you to start a fucking bakery, right? Even if it loses 10K a month, he's like, baby, have fun. Go lose, go torch 10K a month, have fun with your bakery. Women are constantly trying to advance an agenda through projecting their authority onto a man. Now, the man has the ability to strike that down, right? Or not. But I do believe that, that it, the, the, the ethos of ambition is a feminine trait. In the, mod- in the modern society, ambition is a feminine trait. I will die on that. So head. if I have an ambition to become president of the United States, that's feminine? It's, so here's the thing. The drive, the anima 
inside the man because there's masculine and feminine the, the balance Correct. right yang yang every hyper masculine man has an extremely feminine core i believe that to be an absolute fact um yes i believe there's a woman driving that man deep inside 100 percent. I, I will agree in the sense that almost every man i've ever met who's a baller i mean you know not fucking gold chains all over but a legitimate hundred million billionaire um most of them have a very good woman on their side i will tell you that absolutely um i it's very important for men to actually have a loyal woman let me tell you why as a man you can't go out there and conquer you can't go out there and be the best version of yourself if you're worried your girl's gonna be sucking someone else's mm -hmm. dick when you're out when you're gone 100 you, you can't do it 100 i mean unless you're destiny 100 <laughs> percent. you know that line in that rap song hoes ain't loyal i think that's completely inverted i think <laughs> women are the loyal ones i if a woman truly loves a man i am i kid you not you think it's your boys who will bury a body in the desert for you it's actually your girl your gr a woman will go under barbed wire and climb fucking mount everest naked for you if she's in love with you i have never seen loyalty on this earth from any creature any beast than a woman that's the truth I've had plenty yeah. of male loyalty, but the the female loyalty once it's locked in is unlike any other yeah, beast on the planet. Yeah, maybe maybe with, she... maybe with you, maybe with you. We're talking about okay. outliers, maybe, right? Maybe with you. And I, I gotta say, um, you know, when it comes down to it, if you're fucking a woman, right, she's probably not gonna leave you. Hundred percent. You know, that's what it all comes down to. They need that in their life too. Yeah, I'm, but but a woman would rather be the king's concubine than the peasant's wife. So she's leaving the peasant for the king. Yeah, yeah, women women who have rules will break them for certain guys. Yeah. That that I've seen. There's a reason 40% of men don't have kids and only 14% of women don't have kids. And and that's why we had the institution of marriage. That's why we actually have religion. So that 40% of losers could have women, could have wives. That's why the institution of marriage was created so we could have they could have kids a society, but now it's all destroyed. And it's all destroyed because of feminism. Completely because destroyed. these women now will run around, right. do whatever they want, and they have no accountability. I mean, accountability and women just go to hand in hand like oil and water. Okay, but this is where the red pill goes wrong. It goes super wrong, right? Red pill Shoot. tells you be toxic, be unavailable, don't be around too much. You gotta be with your boys, leave her at Garbage. home. Leave her at home. Garbage advice, yeah. and I'll tell you why in the 1950s if a woman was chilling at home there was no cultural programming that was that corrosive if she turns on the tv what's going to be on the tv little house on the prairie yeah, lassie yeah. yep not that bad right mm -hmm. now if you leave a woman at home long term for too long what's the cultural programming she's going to be scrolling instagram facebook <laughs> absolutely corrosive <laughs> toxic corro corrosive programming right so it's going to fry her brain 100 percent if she's left unchecked i think it's the complete opposite. I think men need to be in the game very often with their woman in 2023. I think you need to be around her all the time. I think she should be like the pet monkey on your shoulder everywhere you go because it's, it's that projected authority that I was talking about. You men, know what I mean? Men can't always be around their women. They, can't, have, can't they, have, always. To, they have to trust their woman is going to be loyal when they're out there going out there across the country making their bag. 100%. But I also do believe that women need to... Look, I think the only relationships that work nowadays is a woman needs to be in on the project with her man. She should be helping you secure the bag. If your woman's not helping you secure the bag or not working with you on a project, there's a fucking problem, in my opinion. There I has to be an incorporation. I mean, to listen, some degree. Li listen, if, if a woman is working too much, she starts stressing out and she starts picking up masculine traits. Yeah, it's okay for your woman to help you out a little bit, mm -hmm. but none of this 50-50 bullshit. No, 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 no. Certainly not. Certainly not the 50-50 thing, but like. I don't know. I've seen a trend of like women kind of ruining their husband's business. <laughs> I've seen like a trend of like women thinking they're way more important than they are <laughs> and taking all the credit for their husband's success. I, I, I've I've actually seen, heard that one before. I've seen this like trend. That's yeah. fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I, I, I could see both sides, but I definitely. Like some chicks get in the business. There's, I can't, I'm not gonna say it because I'm not trying to start drama. But I can think of one YouTube personality that, like, the woman has made their reputation so much worse. So much worse. No, no, don't. I, say, don't I, say, I say, will say, agree <laughs> if it comes to a intelligent, high value woman. But I mean, intelligent women, bro. Come on, that's <laughs> a, that's a, that's a, <laughs> you know I hate the middle. You know I hate talking about the middle. I like talking about the top. 
I got you. I that's, got you. But, but, but the people who are listening to you 100%. are at the bottom. 100%. At least most of them. But they're aspiring to be at the top. Yeah. I get you. I get you, brother. The thing that I wanted to say too is I think you can you can literally only be an alpha in the streets or in the sheets. You have to pick one. All the all the gangsters that I know that are alpha in the streets, they're all on their wife's leash. All of them. Because they're away from home too long. And what happens is you whenever if you look, my point is is obviously you can be away from the home, but if you're away from home for too long, you inevitably make mistakes that score her a ton of points. That's all I'm saying in this modern day and age. There's two, look, you can almost say Instagram and social media is a surrogate patriarchy, right? As a man, you now are pitted against enemies that are trying to control and dominate your women. Corporations, everything is pro, trying to program your, your woman. So where does the authority come from? Men are losing authority to all these media conglomerates. So how do you how do you step in and, and squash that? You got to be in the game with her. That's my point. Of course, you still have to answer the call to adventure as a male. If you're a red blooded male, yeah, you got to scratch that itch. But I, me as a man, I'm pitted against motherfucker. I got 20 guns pointed at my head trying to program my woman on a good day. On a good day, and I got to fight that somehow, right? The only way to do that is to be sitting in the throne. I, I think the best way to do that is make sure your woman doesn't have any fucking friends who are whores. That's the, <laughs> I, I, I think that's the number that's one thing to 100% do. 100% because, because correct. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if, if your girl tells you that she's the good girl in the group. <laughs> <laughs> I got news for you, brother. Yeah. 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 Um, that's, that's a fact. So friends should be vetted. I think that's an important conversation to have. I think friends need to be vetted 100%. Especially men who change on you as soon as they get a woman. If, you have, if you've been bo boys with someone for about 10, 15 years and they find a woman and all of a sudden in a month they start flipping on you, you know, that, that and they start being disloyal and more loyal to the woman after a month, that's why I would never have beta male friends. 100%. Because they will never fucking be loyal to you. They will fucking sell you out the river 100%. as soon as you can. Because if a man is easily influenced by flesh, if a man is weak to flesh, that means he's not going to be loyal. He's just not. He will sell you out for the woman every single time. He'll sell you out for a Diet Coke. Uh, that, that's unfortunate. See it all the time? I can't even get a Coke in a glass, brother. It's a Mexican Coke? I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> Run-of-the-mill Diet Coke, man. I've seen it happen. It's unreal. We'll do it. Malik, you've been hearing this conversation. Do we just sound like a whole bunch of fucking Americans to you? No, they've got a lot of good points there. You know, I'm just listening in and trying to get my bearings. But I think that's the issue right now is that, you know, where are your bearings? You know, what are your principles? You know, what, how were you brought up? You know, do you know what a man is? Do you know what a woman is? What's the duties? What, what are your duties? You know, what's a woman supposed to be doing? What's your wife supposed to be doing? What are you supposed to be doing? My wife's supposed to be watching the kids. And that's how I don't know what other be. wives are doing. My yeah, wife's are doing. So naturally, <laughs> the wife's supposed to be taking care of home while you, the man, is out there, you know, working and coming and you take care of her and she takes care of you by taking care of home so you don't have to be worried about what's going on in the back. Yeah, that, I mean, 100%. So once we gotta... know what our roles are, what our duties are, then we're okay. But if we start, you know, saying that, okay, like, okay, I can do what a woman can do. And, I'm, you know, and a woman say, yeah, I can do what a man can do. Then the lines become blurry and you don't know what's going on and anything goes. And that's where now we don't know you see, who's supposed to be in control. Is it the man or is it the woman? Oh, let's flip the script for don't a second. You? Hold on. Let's flip the script for a second. Let's say the woman is making a lot more money than the man in relationship. Is he not eventually going to be the beta male bitch? 100%. But that's one of the most common configurations right now. That goes back to my point about corporate land. Women, like if you, if I'm not even joking, if you're goofy and you can fuck a woman good right now, a woman will take care of you. She'll buy you gifts, take you on trips, she'll pay for everything. You see these configurations all over the place. You got, would you want that though? Fuck no. I would never want a fuck, fucking woman taking care of me. No. Listen, listen, when I was broke, like in, uh, when I was 21, 22, and I had to, you know, like my girlfriend had to help me out and stuff like that. I felt like a bitch, dude. I felt like a straight up bitch. And the problem is, if you don't have that self-worth in you, if you don't have those morals in you, be like, yo, 
this ain't the way. I can't have this bra taking care of me. You know, you're 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 not going to succeed in life. That's at least my opinion. Hundred percent. But so my point was, the only two configurations that work are the polar ends of that. It's either that configuration, which is a common one, or you got to go the complete other direction where you lord over the house like a fucking aristocrat. It's literally one of the two. So you either be like Tate or be like a church. Pretty much, yeah. The middle's dusted. Dude, the middle is dusted. People don't understand. The middle is so wrecked right now. It's at the extremes always. It's high-end, low-end theory. Low-end dudes are cleaning up. High-end dudes are cleaning up. The middle is completely flat. Unless you're a woman. Unless you're if, a woman. If you're a woman and you're a five, you're you can put up some it. makeup, yeah, go on IG, it. look like a 7.5. 100%. All of a sudden, these guys are offering you trips. Yeah. I mean, I, I've seen influencers talk to people on the phone for uh, on video call for the first time on streams talking about, yo, come through. I'll buy you a ticket, this and that. I'm like, wow. But that's, really? the, that's part of the inversion. Have you noticed that very good-looking men date very ugly women i don't think women who are extremely good looking want a man who looks better that than is them. correct that is correct it's what a lot of these youngsters do not understand is that so this is part of the inversion you got a bunch of guys who are looks maxing now if you notice this guys are so self-conscious about their appearance i i have a personal theory that the the invention of the mirror like the household mirror is one of the most evil fucking introductions into culture because men started preening and primping in front of the fucking mirror. And it created this gaping hole of insecurity that has yet to be filled. Men were never really supposed to know what the fuck they looked like. You know what I mean? Like it, no. you had to stoop low into a fucking body of water to see your reflection. Men are salient forces. We're thrusters. We're supposed to inflict what we have inside us onto the world. You know what I mean? Like we are not supposed to contain things in, but this modern society, it's guys just want to be prettier than their fucking girlfriend have you noticed this guys oh, literally oh, want oh, to be more beautiful than their fucking women i remember my dad told me um the man's job is to work mm -hmm. have scars and the woman's jobs to look good I, i'm i'm totally okay with my woman looking good enough for the both of us i'm totally okay with that exactly because that that i don't i, I don't think men should be pretty boys unless they're five white pads mm -hmm. i don't think men should be pretty boys dude it's a cursed archetype actually seriously because like like the incels should be a little bit easier on themselves to be honest with you because the 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 fucking pretty boy archetype he might be able to fuck 100 chicks a week but he ain't any closer to getting love than the incel you know what i mean because he's not a man he's a pretty boy there's a huge difference. And you are correct 100% because, like you said, a woman never wants a man to outshine her in the beauty department. I don't know. That is not what I've seen. Um, just from, like, interviewing guys on shows, the pretty boys clean up. They I, clean I, up, but they don't get love. No, they do. Like, I mean, I'll have pretty boys come on, and, like, some of the guys will be complaining about, like, modern women, whatever, and they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Women cook for me all the time. They do Yeah, except, stuff. again, women will make exceptions for certain guys. Yeah. You know, a woman who's never cooked for, before, all of a sudden she finds the man of her dreams, she's in there Betty Crocker all of a sudden. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, nah. maybe, maybe that's what you've seen. I just haven't seen that. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, w w the way I look at it, um, I think women are the most manipulative creatures on the planet. I think if a woman is attractive um, and she can, you know, knows how to just manipulate a little bit, she can be very fucking dangerous, extremely dangerous. And, you know, listen, if you're a girl and you're one of these boss girls and, you know, you're making your money and you're doing your thing, cool. As long as you're not open your legs to like 50 different men within two years or something like that, it's fine because the problem with women is you get pregnant and then you have those kids. That's the issue. Talking about micro chimerism? Yeah, I mean, to a point. I'm sure you could have a field day with that. Huh? Micro chimerism, where women literally host portions of the DNA of every man they've ever slept with. That DNA never goes never away. Never will change. That's, that's why women actually absorb energy and men actually give energy that's why and again i'm not saying men should be whores either but there's a difference if a man slept with 100 women mm -hmm. and a woman slept with 100 men there's a difference women absorb energy so, i always like to point out that you know the word mentally ill starts with men meaning if you sleep with too many men 
you become mentally ill. All these bitches who are out here fucking sleeping with 20, 30, 40 freaking guys, they're all bipolar. I mean, you all know whores, every single one of you, and they're usually all bipolar oh. because they slept with too many guys. And just like you said, that energy resonates. No, one, there's one show where there's some OnlyFans chicks on and who said their body count was like, I don't know, 50 to 100, something like that. Disgusting. Yeah, I know. And freaking, I remember feeling, I was like, I feel like a demonic presence. In the room. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one girl was like, can we be friends? I'm like, no. <laughs> Bitch, I was like, I'm blocking you after the show. <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't need this. Stay away. Um, Gary, have you noticed that? Have you noticed this looks maxing culture among men, like these bodybuilding types that are so? Are they seem, a lot of them seem like they're gay. Hundred percent. I mean, I, I've I've had these guys attack me, and then you go look on their stream. They're selling. They're bragging about selling photos to gay men and saying gay men pay a lot of money for photos. It's like, wow. Oh my gosh, I had a guy on the show that did OnlyFans like gay stuff. Like uh -huh. he he said he was gay for pay. I mean, I think that just makes you gay. But he said he was straight. Uh, um, listen, listen. If you're holding your ankles, you're gay. I don't give a damn how masculine you think you are. I don't give a damn about any of this stuff. Um, it, it's it's a totally degenerate society. What are some solutions? Besides repealing I, 19, which we're both for, I what mean, are some solutions? Is there any other way to like take women's vote away? Well, one, okay, I, I also, I feel like men are taking a pay cut. I, I can't prove this, but I really think they're like subsidizing women's jobs because I don't really think we do all that much in the workforce. Like we just go to HR and just whine. That's really all we do. We like go, you remember those TikToks of those girls like working at tech companies and they're like, I had like two meetings today and these girls all made like six figures in tech. So to me, it's similar to the WNBA where they take the men's money and give it to the women. I think we need to get rid of all these diversity hires. I just think it's bullshit. You, you, I think because it, it inflates our ego and makes us think we're more important than we are. You know what's interesting about that fact? Um, the WNBA makes a lot, a, a lot less money yeah, than the NBA, loss. and they actually take their money from the NBA. But here's the interesting part. Women bitch, bitch, bitch. There's more women in America than men. If they actually supported women the same way men support men when right. it comes to athletics, they'd be making the well, same amount of money, if not more. Let's not forget, Ronda Rousey was the number one UFC fighter with pay for a long time. Yeah. Not because she was a woman, but because she was the number one attraction. And that's the beautiful thing about capitalism. Right. If you bring in the money, they will give you the money. Well, and that's and that's what, what I realized was when I was looking at, because I, I played women's sports my whole life. So I realized I was like, basically all the men are taking a pay cut I mean, they don't get asked if they want to, but they really are like all the NBA players are taking a pay cut and giving it to the women. And what I realized, I'm like, I bet you the same dynamic is going on in corporate America. I think the men are just getting paid less and they're working more. That's what, that's what I think is happening. And because I, I looked at infrastructure jobs, I'm like, because a lot of times we shit on the average guy. And I think sometimes it's just like, well, we need the average men in order to do what we do. None of us can do what we do without the men running the infrastructure of society. And so my question is, I, I started, I expanded the definition of infrastructure a little bit to include like truckers, to include, you know, trans, because, you know, some people say it's just plumbing, electricity, but I expanded it slightly, but 45% percent of men means one out of two men have infrastructure jobs where less than seven percent of women have infrastructure jobs and and the women that do it's like two percent of them are police do those really count like the, get the fuck out of there and, and so it's like my question is why are we making more under 30 if the men are doing the more important jobs like we, we always talk about these like you know lonely lost men and i and i agree but it's like what's causing this and i think it's a lot of them are really frustrated because i really think they're working more they're taking the money from the men giving it to the women to give us these goddamn stupid egos making us feel so special when really they're the ones doing the hard jobs i can't disagree with anything and, you and, said and even i was thinking about this like you know i do well but am i really like you know i, I make a lot of money for someone my age but it's would like, you put up with a man who made less than you well i have to i mean come on like i mean I, i'm goaded no no, like, no, you, no, you, no you don't <laughs> no no, no i mean you don't. no but it's like in all it would be honesty, more difficult for you yeah no but it's just like the way i look at it is like okay my brothers are engineers they're smarter than me 
They make less than me. But my Only, brothers uh, are smarter than girls me. make a million a month. Yeah, but the guys paving the road and making fifty thousand a year. Right, that has but nothing to do with but, intellect. But but that's my my point is like just because you make more than a guy, like it's just me monetizing beauty that doesn't really count as being smart. I mean, I I do think I'm smart, you know, for a woman, not for a man. But <laughs> but but in all honesty, it's like I listen to my brothers all the time. They make less than me. Like I just I you know I know guys will never believe me, but I've always I've always wanted to date an engineer. One like, day. Well, I mean, I wanna, like, I'm sure it. millions of people are going to watch <laughs> this. They're going to be right in your DMs, bro. <laughs> and we get one of those arranged marriages. Yeah. Right? But Malik. this is, this right is what I'm trying right to right get on. at, though. We're kind of returning to primal times now, where it's like the the male lions are relatively lazy, just chilling. Like, seriously, I think we're riding the decline till the wheels come off. Men, I don't know any. I can literally can name a handful of people that I know that are working hard in America right now. I don't know too many people that are working that hard. Men are pretty lazy. We're just chilling, sunbathing, doing whatever the fuck we do. The women are out hunting, getting the food. Like, to, to bring. Yeah. What, 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 what are they what hunting? Are, what are we. What are they hunting? I see it. I, I mean, it's like. Hunting well, men? You know, you really no, have, not hunting men. They're hunting resources. That's what I'm saying. Women are working men, hard. Men are sex, resources to women. Yeah, but sex work is like more a more common profession than education now. Like that that's one of the, That's one of the number one employers of women is education. And now probably better work. at it, too. That's what, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. They're logging more hours at the computer than the guys are. No, but no they're not. The guys Doing are just clicking sex a couple. work? Guys are clicking a couple buttons trading crypto all day. No, they're not. Not that's the majority. It. If you look up the, break, the breaking down the workforce, no, they're not again 45 percent of men have infrastructure jobs so that means you're like driving the trucks that's not an easy job the electricity that's not an easy job like i mean men run society how do we get no those, but this. that but that sec those sectors are fading no of course they are they're slowly no. disappearing there that, that is true i mean yeah that but it's true. still but i'm saying like to right now 45 percent of men have infrastructure jobs where only seven percent of women do and i i don't think women work more than men and you can look at that, even the income over a lifetime, it starts to peak after we hit 30. It starts oh. to like um, flatline for women. Where what is it, it keeps 80% going of the debt in this country is by women? Yeah, uh, well, and women, show. women. so it's like around uh, it, men, we, we kind of start the same as men in our, in our 20s, and we're starting to un, out earn men in some major cities. But like the average man makes 45,000 and, and peaks at 55 at 70,000. That's like average, the average man man's makes 55,000. I can't. No, no, he world. starts. No, no. And his <laughs> right, I make that a week. Yeah, no, 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 no. 45,000 in his 20s. And then by the time he's 55, that's when his income um, peaks at 70K. But I'm saying 70K. I, I launched that yearly salary oh on, on cockroach racing. Brother, we'll put that in day in a par ways. Well, but, but we all make our money doing like technology, right? And so it's like what we're going to shit on the guy that's do it, that's building the building for us, that's doing the electricity, that's doing the plumbing. Like we need every, those men to do a, a, what we every, do. Everything is supply and demand, mm -hmm. no matter what it is. It, it, like, for instance, Cr when you go to Russia, there's an abundance of beautiful women. There's literally an abundance of beautiful women. So the value no, a beautiful woman no, has I, there is much lower. And I, and I understand it, but, but what I'm arguing is that those men are doing the hard jobs, but the problem is they're getting paid less because we're subsidizing women's 100%. roles. And I don't think women are like putting in the hours. I don't think we're really like grinding like that. I think they're just stealing money. And I can't really prove this. I just think it because well, they're I not really stealing, stealing it. If the cycling. government's giving it to well, them, it's a small their percentage of yeah. I mean, there's a small percentage of men that run these companies that have to give it to the women and transfer the wealth to the women somehow. Well, if you put them all in prison for stealing, there's your 19th Amendment repeal right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they will have a. Some of them will actually actually like that a little bit more. Grand larceny. <laughs> put them all behind bars. There you go. Speaking. Order is restored. Speaking of that. Um. <laughs> We know that four four, uh, I believe 68% of single mothers voted for Joe Biden. Okay, this has to be skewed. Fuck Joe Biden. Does anyone think that election was real still? I, I, no, of course it was stolen. I mean, I think, I actually do know, I can almost say this for a fact, I would put my head in a guillotine and wager this, that Trump won, if you actually counted the true votes, absolutely the largest landslide in world history, but I also think he won California. 
I will. Mm, that I, that's a little. Bit I think of a he won stretch. Cali. That's a stretch. If you don't include the dead people, the fucking immigrants, and all the bullshit, that that's, I think he a, won that's Cali. a bit of a stretch. It, it might be. Um, but I will tell you this: um, when I look at uh, Trump, I I basically went in the White House on December fifteenth, two thousand twenty, when I was invited, first numerologist in history to ever be invited to the White House. And I basically told Trump's advisors, send him to the Marines, send him to Pennsylvania, send him to Wisconsin, send him to Georgia, and basically do recounts. Because you had to cross the Rubicon at that point. Trump had his position. He could have crossed the Rubicon. If he did that, we would not have a war right now, which is basically a money laundering operation for your brother and Biden. Um, when it comes, imagine all that money your body, your brother is making, and he tells you what? What did he, he tell you? He was broke. He told you he's broke. Yeah, yeah. He was broke. Yeah. <laughs> he's broke when it comes to you, he he but he, he's making billions upon billions in funnels. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't even imagine this. Could you imagine Barack Obama, who has how many mansions? A five, I think. Five, five mansions, but to you, he's broke. He's stingy as Scrooge. <laughs> Scrooge McDuck. Yeah, he's stingy. Yeah, that's all he is. You know, he's all about himself. Here's a question. Does anybody actually truly believe that a Republican's actually going to win an election again? Because I think it's just rigged till the end of time now. I, I think it's done. I, I don't understand what the difference is going to be in 2024 if they stole it in 2020. That's what I'm saying. What is going to be the difference in 2024? Like, they're just better prepared now. I, I just don't understand what the difference is going to be. Like, Trump, you got they stole it. I believe you, Trump. I believe you. They stole the election from you. My question is, what is going to be different in 2024? That's what I I'm saying. I just don't understand. That's what I'm what saying. is all this? Oh, we're going to do it this time. What you forget they stole it last time and, and, and the only way trump can do this is to win by a landslide that's right i i i, I personally believe that Everybody republicans have to win by landslides now because if it's two three four five points they'll cheat they'll find a way they'll but if it's 15 20 points yeah. that's going to be very very difficult 100%. to cheat so um, I, I just don't see how a republican's going to well, pull that off they didn't even factor in the margin correctly the, this last time it was hilarious. They just shut it down for three days to catch up. So how anybody is still thinking that Republicans are going to come hard charging, blow torches at the door, battering rams and make this thing happen? It's, it's a joke at this point. a problem. We're too nice. I don't even know, like, I don't even really know what happened with the stealing the election. I just know I went to bed and we were winning and it was my birthday and I thought we were going to win. And then I woke up and we lost yeah. and I was pissed. I was like, what? It was my birthday. I, I, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I made a tweet. Uh, karma, I, I, Gary. I, I, Tell her about her karma. Uh huh. What goes around comes around. Um, I remember I made a tweet uh, before. I, I think it was August 2020 that Trump would win and they would steal the election from him. And what do you know? That account was suspended right after the election. Shocking. Shocking. Absolutely shocking that they would suspend my account. It wasn't once. It wasn't twice. 18 freaking times they suspended my account and by the way there's a lot of people who like to say i'm some kind of connected with uh some kind of zionist or rothschilds because i'm blowing up with numerology and stuff like that i'm a jew and chase shut me down I want to make that statement again. I am Jewish and Chase shut me down right after I went to the White House to visit President Trump. So don't give me this bullshit like Jews don't get it too. If it doesn't, none of that shit matters. If you're a conservative, they're coming for you. That's my opinion. And I, I, I want to thank Elon Musk because I believe by him buying Twitter and making it go this much more right, he has pulled IG. He has pulled TikTok a little bit more to the center. That's my opinion because let me tell you now, I can get away with a lot of stuff now on IG. I probably would have got suspended for it two years ago. And the only obvious common denominator is Elon Musk. Hmm. I agree. You guys know the cycle of strife, right? Cycle of strife, good, good times create weak men. Yes, weak yes, men, okay. Yes, yes. I believe Gen Z are the strong men created by the bad times. Generation Z. I do. Because I think they, Gen... They, 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 like 25% of these guys consider some... I get that, but... <laughs> Sorry, that's I funny. get that. 25%. So the other 75%. They're going to be dogs? They're going to be... These are the fucking Rottweilers. Really? That are going to get us out of this... They're going to they're gonna build the tech. 
that's gonna evacuate people like us who are getting our bank account shut down. Cause these guys are all fucking, they're all experimental. They're fucking throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. They're the crypto kids, they're the social media kids. They are gonna build the decentralized banking system, 100% Gen Z, that helps you and me out. Maybe there's a Steve Jobs, maybe there's a Steve Wozniak within Generation Z. Right now. You know, right they're now. They're watching who, this podcast. They're watching and they're gonna build something and they'll make you look like you're basically you know, a million bucks right now because you're That's saying it. what it is. I'm gonna uh, look but, like Nostradamus. But most of these guys, most of these guys are soft as fucking hell. Dana White said it best. He said, if your kid is even a little bit of a savage, he's gonna run through these fucking beta males like never before because there's never been more single mothers than there is right now. 100%. They're gonna run through them. So yes, the divide between the alpha and the beta is getting woo, and that's when society breaks. You need this bottom half yeah. to have women. Yeah. You need the bottom half to have women to have kids so they can basically keep society going. The, the people who don't like mass immigration, the people who say shut down the borders. Well, women have to have kids. Yeah, there's you, a you have to, you know, once women don't have kids, and what I mean by don't have kids is having abortions every nine you know, months and stuff like that. Boy. Once Once women don't have kids, all of a sudden you have two choices. You either let the border let the borders open, you let the immigrants in to fill in that vacuum, to buy into the tax system, or you do like Japan. You know you're gonna have an older demographic, you just shut down immigration, don't let anyone in, and slowly but surely your society collapses. That's what's gonna happen, 100%. you got one or two choices. So I'm an accelerationist. I 100% am all for this whole gender wildness because I, I truly do believe that all of these fat feminists with lurid blue hair, pierced nipples, doing crazy shit, I think it's a cry for help. I know for a fact it's a cry for help. And what I think is gonna happen is we're in a correction phase. Things are gonna get so accelerated and so out of control that these women are essentially, because they can't say this verbally, right? But they can communicate it in subtext through their behavior, through the fucking, you know what opossumatism is? Mm -hmm. Like poisonous frogs in the rainforest, they, they're fucking lurid bright colors to show you they're poisonous. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why these chicks dye their hair and get all tatted. They're telling you how poisonous they are, right? Why would they do that? Because it's like they're wearing their trauma, right? They're embroidering their trauma on their body. It's like a way of like, you know, they're, they're you know, seeking help. Well, you know, resting bitch face. They're basically seeking help. Hundred percent. It's a cry for help. So my point is, in this accelerated, it's gonna save them though. Well, that's my point. <laughs> yeah. It's all gonna crash and burn, and then what's gonna spawn out of this mm -hmm. is in a new iron guard of men who are gonna come in with an iron fist, probably covered in a velvet glove, and they're gonna fucking smash all of this shit to a billion little pieces, and it's gonna have to be rebuilt. And then every order is gonna be restored because at this rate, you, you can't fix this. We're too deep in now. This is not a reversible okay, okay, thing. I agree. We can only go forward, right? Mm -hmm. It's a forward escape, as the French say. You cannot go backwards, you gotta escape forward. So we gotta run this bitch into the ground, ride the decline. And then that new iron guard of men, the most masculine force of men you have ever fucking seen are about to be birthed and spawned. And they're gonna blossom and they are going to annihilate this whole feminist thing. But this is what the feminists want. They want fucking okay. a strong, powerful I, force I to come in and obliterate. I agree, but the only strong powerful force i see right now and anyone can correct me if they think i'm wrong muslim men that that, that 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 is the only yeah. strong force yeah. i see that's not capitulating yeah, well. and, and again i'm not muslim i'm never gonna play pray to allah I'm sorry not brother but i'm just stating fact you can give me you have two choices right now you either go to the bt or you go to the muslims Mm. It's that well, simple. It's because they, they infiltrated the churches in the 1900s because they realized they could have more power and influence. The non-denominational Christian churches got it the worst. But who, they, who allowed that to happen, though? Who allowed what who to allowed, happen? Who, well, I mean, I, I would say it was a small... I can't remember which family it was. I have to remember the writing, but it was... It was basically a small percentage of like families that had a lot of money because in the industrial revolution, mm -hmm. that was the big, that was like when there was the biggest wealth gap. And so they realized the best way to influence the population was through the churches because people listened to yeah. the churches. Okay. Um, so the non denominational churches got it the worst, but they also started funding like um, seminaries. That's where we got all the gay priests from. I, I get it, but, yeah. but they tried the same stuff with Islam, it didn't work as well. 
Oh, I see what you're saying. That, that's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. They allow that to happen. Like, for instance, if you go to, the, uh, to Christians mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. um, Russia, Poland, Romania, you try to talk shit about Jesus or all this other stuff, you're probably going to get your ass whooped. Uh, uh, you do that in America, they don't give a damn. You can make fun of Jesus. You can do whatever you want yeah, here in yeah, America. Yeah. yeah. They're not going to, but in those countries, they actually still care because they haven't been corrupted. And I'm going to tell you why. In Poland, in Russia, in all those countries, feminism is very, very low. Once you have real, see, the people at just, who are low IQ, mm -hmm. in my opinion, they need something to believe in. I just, they need something to fear. I, I just wonder, um, and I'm not going to say this definitively, but I, I kind of wonder if it's coming to the Muslims too and to Russia too. Because, like, even like the my employees that work for me that are um, African, they're all say, like, because I always figured like it was a little better there, but they're like, no, the young women are just the same. And then I watched like an interview in Russia of them interviewing like young women about feminism and pay equality. And it, it's still coming because social media, everyone's, unless they ban social media, all women are so influenced by social media. Um, Putin passed a law a couple years where he repealed um, domestic violence laws. So, <laughs> so I, I, I don't really <laughs> think that um, that, you know, feminism maybe I, maybe what you're talking mm -hmm. about is they're all still in the first wave of feminism, which had some merit. The first wave, first wave, at, at, at a little bit dope. of merit. No, they were. You don't think you don't think no, they had any merit no, whatsoever. Not really. No, I, I think that they were one like women didn't even like them back then. If you watch, listen, if you read the anti like the anti suffragettes had more um, supporters than the suffragettes. Like they they were regarded as like weirdos in the 1800s. Women didn't even like these women. Like there was a writing I, I can't remember the lady's name, but in the 1800s talking about how they had to like sell this better to women because women had too good of lives back then. <laughs> For them to sell them on feminism. <laughs> That's why, like, I don't, I don't really, no, I don't, I don't think it really had merit. I think women, most of history, have had better lives than men. I think that, um, I, I, you know, listen, I'm a numerologist. Mm -hmm. I believe in that you know, wholeheartedly. And even though I think women, on, as a whole, are much less intelligent than men, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's the number seven, and you know, seven is the number of the genius. And when I look at people, women who are born in the 7th, 16th, 25th, mm. they're just as intelligent as men. Well, and, and, and again, it's mm. a rare exception. Like, for instance, uh, there's not many female bodybuilders in the world. You know, so they're, they're stronger than most average men. But mm. a male bodybuilder is always going to be stronger than a female. So there is some exceptions mm. but they're rare but it's but it's a misconception that women couldn't be influential in society the first female property owner in um the united states was in the 1600s 400 years ago like women were not oppressed then they're not oppressed now um this idea like the first female millionaire was late 1800s and i think there's arguably one quicker um, but I don't want to quote. Does she that get one. her money from a divorced husband? No, well, inherited. The, no, I, I was. I think there was a self-made one quicker, but there was a one of the first feminists that was funding all this stuff. Like she divorced. She was like the first rich divorce. It was in the 1800s. Um, I wish I could remember all these names off my the top of my head. My question is, why should there be an issue of feminism? If you're a woman, you're a woman. Yeah. You're a man, you're a man. What's all this feminism and so forth? I don't understand it. I don't get well, it. Well, I, I think that evil... It's to destroy society. I think that evil happens when you disrupt the natural order of the world. And it's weird. I'm not, like, crazy religious, but I guess this is, like, a religious, like, thought but it's like um like i think the natural order is god men women and i think it's really interesting how we can like it, i don't know almost say our true feelings about things just in our language like if you tell a man he's acting like a woman that's an insult why would it be an insult because women are below men but uh, but a woman that acts like a man almost like can make money and almost i mean i don't want to say i think you're gonna get like uh ten thousand marriage proposals right after this podcast <laughs> <laughs> well and, I, and i'm She's not saying all the good well, things well and i'm not even i'm not even saying like i do it perfectly but but i think evil happens when you confuse everyone in the natural mm. order of the yeah. world and i think it's confusing like i'll give you an example like i i spent the first half of my 20s trying to be 
be a volleyball player. And really, I spent, you know, my primary reproductive years um, chasing after a career that makes zero dollars. And fuck, it actually, I, I looked into it, it actually messes up your hormones and makes you more masculine. That's why you see so many lesbian, like, soccer chicks and lesbian basketball chicks. It literally makes you more masculine and makes you into a man. And so it's like, you know, I, I think a lot of times it, all of these institutions. You don't are think here. women should be athletes? Um, I, I have really, I have a hard, I don't know, because I really did love it. I really loved playing, but I do think sometimes like things that maybe as a whole, it, like I see what happens in volleyball and really like it's run by a lot of feminists and really like you play until you're 32 and then you retire. You know what I mean? Like if you take volleyball to, to the extreme. Cat, like yeah, that. yeah, like, you know, it's sad because I really do love the sport. But if I look at the outcomes for a lot of women that play, they're not good. And it, it's like I, I think there's just a lot of institutions that are confusing us on the natural order of the world and trying to make women like that is a masculine thing that's turning a woman into a man by the way i sincerely believe all women will get their best natural physique just from walking there is nothing inside a gym that will improve a woman's physique more than walking Ten thousand steps a day. what about running same thing okay just making sure but the gym gym culture and women is very bizarre to me are, are most of the women who go to the gym uh, pretty much every day hoes Hundred percent. All right. So I mean, they're basically looking for a new hookup every single day. If you spend all your time at the gym and you're a woman, who's taking care of the children? I, I mean, <laughs> that's a good question. Well, and, and these children, there, there's some women who don't want to have babies because they want to ruin their bodies. And by the way, child kids destroy women's bodies. I'm not going to lie about that. Um, but you know, listen, that's what you guys are for. That's what you guys are for. You're for the well, make and, kids. and the earlier you have kids, I, I guess it's easier to like bounce back from it. Like there's some hormone or something when you have kids younger, where it's what like age? Easier. What do you think that's uh, a good age? Um, well, and by the way, it, it can't. It's be, unfortunate. It, it's unfortunate. I didn't follow it, but I, but I've heard it's like before the age of 25. If you have kids, like it's easier to come back from. But after like you're, it, I don't I don't know the science behind it, so mm -hmm. don't quote me. This is just something I've heard. By the way, to answer your question, because I, I did want to touch on this about you said, why does feminism, where did it come from? I truly believe Rocky that, powers. dude, I think feminism spawned, I, I think all the issues with women are truly men's fault fundamentally. I do. Talk to me, why? I do. I men, think it's what, men's is fault it because men were so weak that they gave women the right to vote? 100%. Is that it? 100%. Okay. Well, the deciding vote on giving women the right to vote did it because his mom told him so. But the problem is it's a very small percentage of men making these decisions for all men. He was a Norman Bates type of fella. <laughs> yeah, 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 because his mom was a suffragette. Again, like, the biggest lie we tell them, like, the waves of feminism, it's so not true. Like, these women were not liked. Like, there's a reason we burnt witches at the stake. There's a reason, like, witches were performing abortions. That's why they burnt these bitches. Witches were feminists. Like, <laughs> they, they literally burnt these women in villages. The fact that you brought up abortion, I want to give my stance on abortion. Um, I believe when a woman has a child, it's not that woman's body anymore. It is the child's body just as much as the woman. The difference is the woman's the bus driver. She's the one that decides what I'm doing, what I'm eating, what I'm drinking, what I'm sleeping. But it's the baby's body, too. They're just in the back seat. So yeah. if you're going to be a woman out here who says, it's my body, my choice, listen, you best believe in karma. You best fucking believe in karma. Because I'm going to tell you something. A lot of women who basically had abortions got breast cancer right after. That's why I call it karma. You know what's crazy? Women have been killing their kids since the dawn of time since the dawn of time even in the 1800s like it wasn't uncommon for women to kill their children um i've talked to some historians that say it was like 10 percent, 20 percent um and i think it goes back to back in like the caveman or like when people moved in like groups of like 40 i can't remember what era but they basically if they had more than two kids they would slow the whole pack down so they would just they would just yeah women killing kids instinctually yeah i don't know it's just our thing um to the people listening, you know, we've basically told guys 
you know it's a it's going to be a tough ride for you it really is but let me just give you guys some advice um the last thing you want to do is get have a child when you're about 17 18 years old no matter who you are you're always going to be in your enemy year in astrology it's 17 18. what you want to do is basically do what i did have kids under your own sign if i'm born in the snake year and you best believe my first child is born in the snake year because i wanted someone that i could teach this stuff to if you're born in a certain year like a dragon you should have a dragon child if if, if you just apply a little of this knowledge to your everyday life problems go away i mean guys I don't have these problems of women cheating on me. I don't have these problems of women fucking bossing me around and doing all this other stuff. I don't have any of these problems. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at you guys like you're fucking morons. That's the way I look at all these guys who start telling me about their women problems. And it doesn't matter if you're fucking broke or alpha or whatever. If you can't hold down your woman, you fail. And I'm gonna tell you guys something, 2016, was when I really woke up to the betaization of males. Because you had men out there saying, vote Donald Trump, vote Donald Trump. They'll go up on podiums, vote Donald Trump. And then their wife will cancel out their vote by voting for Clinton. Their daughter will cancel out their vote by voting Clinton. Let me tell you bastards something. If you can't convince your own fucking family members, shut the fuck up. Because you don't need to convince anyone else. Convince your family first. All you men, I'm talking to you. Remember you're talking about weak men? That's who the fuck I'm talking to right now. Don't go out there on spaces. Don't be making tweets. Don't be making reels on Instagram saying vote Trump. Go talk to your wife and talk to your daughter and make sure they don't fucking cancel out your vote. You know, that's what, you know, my personality test, if I take it, it says I'm very liberal. I'm very high in the trait openness. Like if a liberal gets a dog, um, the dog will be more friendly. If a conservative gets a dog, it's going to protect them. There's certain, like, there's certain personality traits that come with liberal and conservative. And it's funny because um, in college, you know, they just are programming you to be a liberal. And every time I would have like a little bit of a liberal idea, I would come home and I would, I would tell my dad this like silly idea I learned. And he would just sit down with me and break down slowly why I was an idiot. And that's how I became a conservative, you know. <laughs> Shout because out, you Dad. Because you had yeah. a strong male yeah. figure in your life, and he turned you conservative, correct? Yeah, because he did. you Because he did. you would have been a liberal without yeah. your dad. Yes. Are you guys yeah, listening? Correct. yeah. Are you guys listening? You need yeah. a strong male figure. No bullshit. I want to decipher the, the term strong. Because I think a lot of men truly don't understand what a strong. I'm not talking male, about going to gym. Exactly, <laughs> what a strong male leadership even looks like. I, to me, I think it's sort of this effortlessness, like this red pill thing of all these guys that want to be super fucking dominant. They want to clash horns, lock horns with their girl all day, tell her what to do every second of the day. I think if you awaken the soft power, because look. This is the reality, okay? I do believe women have more power in relationships in the sense that they have the soft power. Men have hard power, women got the soft power. Explain you, what soft power is. Soft power means that she has all the psychological games. You know what I mean? Like it's like she, we bat our eyes. So they're better, they're better at manipulation. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Sneakiness and cunningness. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's, yeah. a, that's a woman's game. They can't overpower you, they gotta do they something. They can't overpower you, they gotta do something. <laughs> but you don't wanna awaken a woman's soft power in a relationship because women are far more irrational and they will burn every fucking thing to the floor and have a full disregard. They will not give a fuck if you push them far enough. So my question to you was, when you say strong male leadership, because to me, the winner in any situation is always just chilling. That's the definition of a winner. A winner is always just cruising, not really working too hard, making it look a little bit effortless. The loser is always chasing the winner. So what is the definition for you of like a strong man? Because to me, when I think of a dominant male, I don't think of some motherfucker who constantly has to clash into his woman all the time i think that's actually beta so what, do you, what, what do you see as strength well sorry can i one Go, thing because yeah, yeah. doesn't that mean you're on the same level if you're arguing with her on the time like if exactly. like a boss doesn't argue with an employee tells her 
what to do. Unless he gets out of line. Yeah, but you're not going to go back and forth with them for hours. No. For like, you know what no. I mean? No. <laughs> like, I, I, I mean, it's like kind of like if you're going back and forth and he's arguing with his chick all the time, doesn't that just make them on the same yeah, level? There's got to be some checks and balances. Yeah. Otherwise, we are going, you're going to have a whole bunch of savages. <laughs> Yeah, we got quite a few of those. But <laughs> when it, when human beings, they want to do whatever they want to do. You know, you have free will. You can do whatever. Like Allah that. gave it to us, right? Yeah, you have free will. But there's got to be checks and balances. And that's why there's a law. Man-made laws. Man or God-made man laws. Man-made laws. And then there's also God-made laws. Which are more important? God-made laws. Okay. Of course. Yeah. So you got to have some checks and balances, and you got to know which is the check and which is the balance. God, uh, the Bible and the Quran also say put God in front of your family. Do you put God in front of your family? Yes. I don't. I never will. I do. How can you put a figure that you've never actually met above your own flesh and blood? It's a belief system. Okay. Yeah. You got you? the people who, who, who are brought up eating other people. What's the question? And that's normal for them. Do you put God <laughs> above your own family? Yeah. Personally, I do not. I do not either. No. You already answered that question, I believe, right? Do you put God in front of your I own have family? A really, I have a really interesting like view on this, and this is just how I think. I think that God is like in every man, and the devil is in every woman. <laughs> you stuffed it out, bro. <laughs> no, okay, hear me out, hear me out. Who did the serpent talk to? He talked to Eve. And I think that, like again, the natural order of the world is God, men, women, children, and I think the devil uses women to get to the men. So, and I think if women do not submit to the natural hierarchy of the world, they get the devil in them. And this was kind of a red pill where I realized that it's not daddy issues, it's mostly mommy issues when you get to the root of it. Most like people like Kanye in front of our eyes, right? He thought he had daddy issues, but he really had mommy issues. That's a really common theme. And I think a lot of times the devil like uses women to abuse the men and get to the men. And I think guys, when left to their own devices, really are they're benevolent. They're benevolent. Think about it. They didn't have to let us vote. They didn't have to let, let us do anything. They could be graping they, us every they, they single day. They were manipulated. No, but wait, but wait. But the thing is, if men get too out of line, they just kill each other. Like, if you go around raping all these bitches, then someone's, some other guy's going to kill you. Look at the Aztec Empire, right? The Aztec Empire was doing all the human sacrifice and crazy. Um, Cortez came over with, uh, with 400 men, got all the tribes together to fuck them up and took them all down. Have you ever heard the term... Um, Vosim the Vosim said. No, I don't know. The term. translation from Russian is eight to eighty. Ever hear of that term? No. It was very common in World War II after the Russians invaded Berlin. They said eight years old to eighty year old grandmothers. They did not care. See, that's what happens when men lose wars. When your men are weak, women start getting raped because that's exactly what happened when uh, the Nazis lost well, and Germany was being taken over by Russian troops. Mm -hmm. They did not care. They raped anything that walked down two feet. Women were specifically cutting themselves with knives so they would look ugly, so they would mm -hmm. not get raped. Well, this is the reality of the situation when women have weak men around. Mm -hmm. Well, and what I'm not well, saying, I'm not saying that men don't do terrible things or like men don't become evil at times, but usually those men were raised again by women. And so I think they get the spirit of the devil from the women. <laughs> and, and usually if they get too evil, another group of men will come and take them out. Usually. I, li I, I like this take because I think women are adept. Women in a relationship with a man, they are, they are like hounds. They, they will sniff out weakness. A woman will break any man's system, okay? That's what I, I, I believe women are system breakers. They're natural system breakers. If you're a man running a system on a woman, running game, running red pill, uh, being toxic on purpose, trying to be unavailable, withdraw attention, all that bullshit, give it enough period of time and you will 100% crack under a woman's shit test. Because women, I do believe in a relationship, and this is kind of going in line with the, this is in lockstep with the evil component. I don't see it as evil because I see it as nature. And I honor nature above anything else, but I do think women are designed to constantly try to break and whittle a man down to nothing. And if he can withstand those tests constantly, he gets all the spoils and the riches. 
Um, I, I I would tend to agree with you. Um, I think that because if you sometimes a man has everything going for him, he's the top of the world. Everyone loves him. He's famous as hell. Has all the money in the world. And but when he gets back home, blah 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 blah. <laughs> always arguing. Always. All, all, always. And and here's the thing. I I want men to understand this. You can't please a woman. You don't try to please women. It doesn't matter what you give them over time. It's never going to be enough. Exactly. It, it, but it, this, it's just the reality of the situation. This is why I was saying you cannot fake being an alpha because a woman will break your system. Yeah. It's going to happen. At, at some point, long enough time scale, a woman will break out your system and snuff it out. They are the masters at it. So none of this shit can be faked. And to your point, it can be fake for a little bit, though. 100 percent. But here's the here's the thing. If you trick a woman into loving you or liking you mm -hmm. through game or somebody you're not right, a persona, mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. say the persona wins the woman. Mm -hmm. When she tells you she loves you, you don't believe her. You can't believe her because, you know, if she knew the truth. Exactly. So these guys end up self-sabotaging before they get discovered because they have that. What do you call it? Imposter syndrome. So the, that, that, that's why these guys abandon the relationship because they're like, they, they, they'll self-destruct. Guys will come to me all the time. They're like, Brute, I'm in love with this chick. Why can't I stop destroying the relationship? I'm like, ah, this is one of those game guys. He tricked her and he, does, he doesn't believe that it's built on a solid foundation. So he's got to bounce before she's inevitably going to find out that he was full of shit anyway. Okay. That's a common, okay. that's a common thing. Let, let's move the subject to a piece of garbage like Adam 22. <laughs> Uh, when when this guy actually pimps out his own wife, at what level do we say, yo, I'm all for chasing clout as everyone in this room is, but there's levels you don't go. There's lines you don't cross. I mean, in all honesty, what's this guy going to do? Start pimping out his daughter when she's of age? I mean, this is absolutely disgusting. How do we stop people in society from doing things like this because what happens is I don't give a fuck about Adam 22, but he influences a lot of people. And now people are gonna be like, yo, if this guy's doing it, why can't I do it? And you know what the most interesting thing about it is? Every time I talk to a people about open relationships, it was always the woman. It was always the woman mm. that said, yo, let's try this. And at Adam 22 situation, it was thing. the woman yeah. who actually did it. She's like, yo, let's do this. Every I, was, I, I had a podcast with a, 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 a whole bunch of females and she, one of them was in an open relationship. And I asked her flat out, whose idea was it? Mine. It's always the women who wants to push the envelope sexually. If she's not being pleased properly yeah well and all the most family dysfunctions in my opinion start from the women it's either a guy that was raised by a woman i'm gonna have to get you armed security after this bro <laughs> no I'm, I'm telling you i'm telling you and even like the oh god this is a hot take a lot of the alcoholic drug addicted men were, were driven that way because a woman drove them crazy and that's a I, lot of them. So you're telling me you believe a lot of men started using alcohol and drugs because the woman drove yeah. into it. Mm -hmm. I agree with that yeah. because alcohol, I mean, a lot of these drugs that they're, so they, there's actually, Carl Jung said that men drink to become women and women drink to become men. I believe that's interesting. Take. I believe that's very interesting. Yeah. And I'm not saying all like some people were just, you know, I have a cousin that was a crackhead. He was just a crackhead, but he was raised by a domineering mother. So, you know, a lot of times, like when you, when you see like a dysfunction in the family and you can, you can tell like, okay, before Will Smith and Jada came out that like, they were all like fucked up, you know, before that, all that came out. Remember they were like the perfect couple. Everyone loved Will and Jada Smith. Mm -hmm. I knew they were fucked up because I looked at the kids and I was like, normal yeah, kids yeah, yeah. raised by normal parents shouldn't be like that. Cause I was like. There's no way in hell I'd be doing whatever, whatever, whatever the fuck, the open relationship mm -hmm. shit. I'm like, something's off. And it's usually the mother's dysfunction. 
Because again, I really think men naturally have God in them. Like men naturally want to do the right thing. Even when you guys kill, you kill for a reason. Now, sometimes it's a stupid reason, but usually it's like respect. Like people used to die all the time because of like disrespect, you know, like they'll and honor like their brother. You know, if you, someone fucks with your boy, you're going and fight. And like women, we're conniving. Like look at the difference between frat houses and sorority houses. Sorority house is like, I, I can still tell you the bitch I hated in high school. This was 10 years ago. That, that's men, men, on the other hand, like we, we hold on to things. We don't let things go. It's just like what it is. Men will go back to their frat houses and love everyone. Like they'll come back. They might get too drunk or maybe get into a stupid fight. But like, it's like the dynamic is a lot more family-like than a sorority house. That's one thing I've yeah. noticed about women. Like for instance, if men hate each other, they can still respect each other. As a man, if I don't like you, I can still respect your accomplishments. Oh God, if a woman fucking hates you, she's gonna hate the way you walk, the way you mm -hmm. talk, the way you say things, the way you work. She's gonna hate everything about you. That is one of the biggest differences between men and women that I've seen. Men can actually deal and actually respect people they don't like. Women, oh. You know what? You know what else I've noticed? Guys will like fight, and then like it's weird. They'll like get into a fight, and then after they're like cool. Yeah, like, I, I, you I took a punch I, I, all the time because like, you respect the guy. Yeah, where it's like if, if two girls get into a fist fight, they're never gonna talk again. Like that's no, the, or, no, no. or even like just a verbal fight. You know what I'm like? Mm, never again. Yeah. No, we're made differently. Yeah, we're made differently. That's why you can't have a man trying to be a woman and be a woman. No, they're trying. You know. No, but your, your, her point was fascinating because she's saying that women started the cascade of abuse in men and men getting fucked up, right? Mm. So the, I agree. They're turning to these compounds, these drugs like alcohol, et cetera. Those are, those are, there's a feminine spirit infused in there. So they get abused by the mom and then they turn to the drugs to get abused again and replay the trauma. And that's another thing. Makes women sense. are more likely, they're the most likely person to abuse the kid. I think I think maybe stepfather's up there too, but like the mom's the most likely one to kill the infant. I'll, I'll push back. It, after, after the, like when women obviously kill with abortion, but mm. after the child is born. Mm -hmm. um, First year uh, infants. Uh, 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 listen, I've mm -hmm. heard a lot of stories about men molesting kids not too many of women actually well, doing stuff molesting, like that molesting it's usually that, it's more likely the stepdad don't disagree which is which is typically what I'm the in. woman's no but it's the woman's choice so, oh okay so i see what you're right? saying so, so the woman yeah. allowed so, that evil to come in the house yeah yes by being promiscuous and stuff like that right right so no this i i always said the woman is the most likely i didn't say sexually abused mm -hmm. i said abuse so the woman is the most Just likely one to abuse um and stepdad's up there too but yeah i think the problem is uh women you know when you're having sex it's a man on top of the woman and i think they have a thing about that you know every time i get in the thing with one of my wives i tell them i didn't create myself to be a man i didn't create you to be a woman but that's how the creator made it so you just Deal with it. And you lie on your back and I'll take care of business, yeah, right? That's a, oh, I, I feel it. I don't think that, I think they have a thing with, you know, being, you know, the weakest. I mean, you being on top of them. Unless it's your brother. They don't like that. Unless it's your brother. I, I, I Listen, I got, I, I got every single penny I own on this planet that Michelle would whoop Barack's ass. She, she probably is the one who's pulling the strings. <laughs> Back up the Brinks truck. I'm going in on that bet right now. <laughs> and we're talking about one of the biggest power layers of the world right now. Literally. Rip. Michelle Obama's minus 800. It just, the line just opened. 800? 8,000, brother. What the fuck? <laughs> the line just opened at Reno. Let's go. It, Back it's up moving up every couple seconds. Every fucking second. You know, um, speaking of gambling, brother, um, listen, I gamble sometimes between like 10, 20K a day. I do parlays. You know, people look at me like I'm like one of the biggest gamblers they know. Brother, I'm doing peanuts compared to what the fuck you're doing. You show me parlays that you put like a hundred thousand, two hundred, three hundred down and hit like for four or five million. I've actually seen those with my own eyes. Yep. How brother, if I lose ten, twenty thousand, I'll go to sleep like a baby. That shit's not gonna but if I lose like half a mil, oh boy, I'm I'm not gonna sleep too well how the fuck do you put that much money down 
and, and still sleep at night. I mean, listen, and you're talking to somebody who does this too. Dude, if I lose, I sleep even better at night. Explain that. Because I know I'm going on the warpath tomorrow. To <laughs> How long you been gambling, brother? Forever. Since I was like 17. 17? Yeah. It's been my profession for almost 20 years. It's all tell I've us done. about. Tell us now about your, your biggest win and your biggest loss. Biggest win? I won 11 million in 24 hours. 11 million doing what? Went on, went on an absolute despicable heroic statistical Parlays. possibility tear yeah just parlaying two three four teamers absolute the aggression meter was through the roof the book was i was literally terrified my host actually called me and he said the back office called us they said they have never seen aggression from a player like this in the history of the book <laughs> they said when you bet with us it's not even like you're trying to take our money it's like you're betting against the world they were like, who the fuck are you? Like, what, what kind of animosity drives you to bet these numbers with us? I, um, my, my, my best run was I made, I, I mean, obviously nothing compared to your numbers. I made about 1.2 million in about three weeks in Atlantic City. They kicked me out of resorts. Oh, yeah. They literally kicked me out. Like, you know, if you go uh, spend money in a hotel, you know, and spend the type of money I'm spending, they usually give you a room. And, you know, I'm and there for a while. I just call up, yo, give me an extension. One day I call up, they're like, oh, yeah, you got to go. I'm like, what do you mean I got to go? <laughs> they're like, you got to go. How is that legal? Yeah, they like, uh, they, un- they don't like winners. They unperson you like Stalin. You just get unpersoned, erased <laughs> from photographs. This, it's unreal. I beat him so bad. Because they used to let you uh, move the over under lines. Could you imagine a uh, lines at eight and a half and you could move it down to six and a half? Mm-hmm. And I just murdered them. They changed their whole system because of me. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. It, it, but here, it, it, here's it the thing great. with my style. My style is so dangerous because I can go the opposite way just as quickly. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I can make 11 mil, but I could torch okay. that 11 mil same day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I will be unfazed because I'm trained now. I've been doing this for such a long time. I, I'm very, very, very cold blooded towards it. How I many times have you lost a million in a day? Probably more than there are fucking bacteria in this room. Okay. So you do understand that most people will never see a million dollars. Most people will never see the kind of money that I won in a 24 hour period. So that's my point is like the way that I'm living and I'm like shedding lives. I'm literally shedding. I'm living the last year. I feel like I've lived a hundred years. I'm writing a book about it right now. I'm literally chronicling the experience that I had the last year, the wisdom that I have learned from the hardcore risks I have taken. Dude, we're not even just talking money. Like Mm -hmm. it gets to the point when you're putting up five million dollar bets you're that's a blood stake bone investment what, what do you do when you put five million dollar bets are you looking at your phone are you looking at the tv smoking squares 24 7 what are you doing because that's got to be a lot of stress brother gatling gunning cigarettes in each hand sometimes i have two lit in each hand <laughs> i'm gatling gunning them and for sure yeah i'm pacing but i, I try i like sports betting because i can live a normal life i don't have to sit in a dungeon in a fucking poker table for 10 hours a day I, that's you don't, you don't like to grind that shit oh no, fuck no place a sports bet go take a nap go walk with my girl try to have a nice day but yes of course it's stressful it's when, when you have a bad day, like for instance, um, if I lost like 20, 30K, my wife can't tell. I'll be stone cold. You won't be able to tell anything. Oh, my girl can tell. So if you lose like a mil, you, you show it, right? Uh, door hinges are being ripped off. Oh, okay. 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 I got you. I got you. But then um, they're being replaced with better ones. With better ones. I got you. <laughs> um, Gambling's I haram. Don't gamble. I don't gamble. Gambling's haram. It's haram. Okay. Is gambling haram or is losing haram? Because I got to tell you, as a gambler, I've had ups and downs. I've had months where I lost 100K. I have months that I won 300, 400K. I've had that. I'm a winner. That man right there is a winner. We've made money gambling. How, why is that haram? Explain that. Because it's in the Quran. Well, I got, I, I understand that, but is, you know, is there a little bit deeper than just it's in the Quran? I'm not trying to understand and... and you just follow God's law and yeah, that's it. Yeah, he's got the wisdom. He knows 
He's the one. He but knows. don't don't you believe as a logical man that if you're actually good at something and you know you make money at it, how can it be bad if it's not hurting anybody? I don't have an answer for that. I just right. I just think losing is wrong. Losing is wrong. <laughs> but we're all speculators to some degree, right? Of course. You know, like for instance, when you when they talk about religion. And they talk about speculation is bad and, you know, uh, astrology and numerology are bad. I mean, BlackRock and Vanguard, these are financial institutions that have like nine, eight trillion dollars. They have a software program called Aladdin. And this thing speculates. That's that's what it does. And they make money on this speculation. And a lot of Saudi royal families, Muslims are in there. So why is it gambling is, is haram when it comes to sports? But not the stock market. I always, I always like found that very interesting that they would say, "Oh, if you put money on the Knicks, oh, that's bad. But if you gamble on the stock market or gamble in the housing market, oh, that's kosher." Which is arguably more rigged, by the way. One hundred percent by the Federal Reserve. Well, the fact that you can make fifteen million and then lose fifteen million, you know, it, like it cancels out everything. <laughs> so you know, what's the point? Well, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, as long as you're up a couple shekels more than you lost. So. You know, so. Just not for you, huh, brother? No, I don't gamble, you know. Pearl, you ever gamble? Um, Kate, like, not really. Um, I think I've done it, like, three times in my life, maybe four. Guys, um, listen, you can be um, one of those people who are very close with your woman. You can be one of those people who talk to your woman about everything don't 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 tell your woman about gambling stuff they don't want to hear that shit man you talk about masculinizing a woman giving her stress yeah that's gonna be, have a woman start gambling fucking parlays you're gonna see how masculine she gets real quick the way i look at it is that i don't have to gamble to be with you you see? <laughs> there you go brother i didn't have to lose 15 million to be with you there so, you go brother I'm uh, I'm, by the way i'm his agent now <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyways um let's switch gears because we have a lot to talk about and i think we have uh, about another hour to do it um this economy to me is pretty much you either can make money through the computer or you can't you're either doing a nine to five job, you're going to the college, you're doing that racket, or you can be a, const or a content creator and try to make it that way. But I'm gonna be honest, it's just like anything else. I mean, how many people wanna be like Pearl? There's only one. How many people wanna be like you? There's only one. I pretty much handicap, handicap my industry. I own my place. I own my fucking field. No one listening to this even knows the name of another numerologist. <laughs> that, that's a that's a that's a that's a fact but you know not everyone's going to be able to make it with computers and i'm getting really worried about ai i really believe that what you talked about that little wrecking point is coming real close because sooner or later these ais are going to put everyone out of business truck drivers you know how do you have a capitalistic society if the very bottom doesn't have income. I mean, that's the reason slavery was ended. The slavery was end. It wasn't ended in 1860s because the white man picked up a conscience. Slavery was ended because they needed capitalism. How do you have capitalism and slavery? You don't have it because a lot of people don't understand this. But during those times in the South, 95% 95 of the white folks during slavery were poor as hell too. How are you going to have a uh, job that pays a living wage yeah. when you have slave labor to comp uh, compete with well, the that's why they stopped slavery because you they couldn't have a capitalistic society with slavery that's why it stopped mm -hmm. you need a viable middle class for capitalism to work so i wonder if we're gonna start um getting things like handmade again do you know what i mean because it's like the quality of even like the quality of like tables like like everything that we have has gone down this is just i was thinking that about that's it. that's because of free trade what? See, that's because of free trade see what happens is mm -hmm. um back in the day uh say for instance the american workers were at a steel plant and it cost them ten thousand uh dollars to make a certain piece of equipment right well all of a sudden the people in china 
the ch people in Vietnam are actually doing the same stuff for three, four thousand. So all of a sudden, all mm. these people are like, well, wait a second, let's fire these Americans and start outsourcing everything. That has a trickle down effect. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, the people at the middle start losing their jobs and all of a sudden the economy starts becoming like this. Yes, I don't know. I was just wondering if maybe I was I had a couple theories. I was like, well, maybe a lot of women's jobs will be eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be back. Uh, <laughs> like they're already, the, the, they're already the, taking. The, they're the, already the taking oldest a, profession in the world is not going to get no, eliminated no, no, no. anytime soon. Oh, what are you talking about? That cam work, the AI chicks, the sex bots—they're coming. Yeah, but coming. I, I refuse to believe that. Um, That's very cool, by the way. What's that? Anybody who is going to indulge in the AI girlfriend is gay, because that those are built by men. Look, men are building products that are fondling you. That is. Brother, there's uh, men out there who have girls who are getting run into four or five times a week, and then they're going down on them. So you, you want to talk about sexual behavior, bro. That's right there. You're essentially, uh, let's talk about Logan Paul. His girlfriend has been around, or the wife that's going to take his bag in a couple years, has been around with Leonardo DiCaprio, a whole bunch of other guys. Oh, my gosh. That Leonardo well, you, DiCaprio, know, you know what I'm talking about? Leonardo DiCaprio is like the kiss of death on these relationships. Because I, I realize Giselle, Once they're 25, they're out. No, like, no, no, no. I'm saying like he curses these women's relationships because Giselle dated him, too. Giselle yeah. Budigen. I was like, I was like, I hope Blake Lively makes it because that's another ex that graduated, like graduated. <laughs> but dude, the the AI shit is just revenge of the nerds, right? It's the nerds have been shit on by women their whole life, so now they have the opportunity to kind of get their clap back, their comeuppance. Well, I, I think Jeff Bezos uh, was coming up like a nerd, but you know, ever since he got his big bag. Um, you know, he doesn't look too much like a nerd anymore. No. Uh, the, the problem with Jeff Bezos is, you know, he basically got a big bag and he dumped his woman. And I, I don't know what to tell women and men except to learn numerology and astrology. Learn who you're compatible with. Learn who you're not compatible with. It's going to save you so much trouble in life. I mean, you spoke about Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen's born in uh, 1965, the year of the snake, and he married Denise Richards, born 1971, year of the pig. Pig and snake are enemy signs. What, what about the kids that they brought into the world? They're going to have a fucked up life because these people didn't take the time to understand how numerology and astrology works. I mean, listen, if I was married four or five times, you guys can invalidate everything I said. But the fact of the matter is, I've been at this for two decades. Two decades. No issues. People need to turn back, not to God, in my opinion. I understand what you're saying, Malik, or all this other stuff. Start turning back to knowledge. Start turning back to what actually works. Again, I tell people all the time, millionaires might not use numerology and astrology. Billionaires do. I want to ask you, how do you man manage it so that you get kids who are born in the right time? No, you basically have to time it out. Is, How do you time it? Well, for instance, um, I wanted a kid born in a snake year, because, and that was 2013. That's when my kid was born. But I was married in 2004. I waited eight years. I planned this out. And by the way, guys, my woman don't take birth control pills. You, you guys, you red pill motherfuckers fucking complain about women all the time. They're emotional. They're crazy. And then you're fucking stuffing pills down their fucking throat because you can't pull out. That's beta as fuck to me. That's beta as fuck to me. Have some fucking pull out game, motherfucker. That's what you guys need to do. So uh, going back to what the hell you were saying. I can't. Pull nine out. months. Oh, you can't. Well, that's why you no. got. How do you? <laughs> no, my thing is this, is that, you know, we're made to be. We're made to be. Be what? To just be. You know, we're not supposed to be pulling out, doing that. You're supposed to have sex and reproduce. Yeah, yeah but. So what I'm saying is this. Is I, how are you going to do it I, in I, such I a couldn't, way? I couldn't afford kids in 2004, 2005, 2006. And the last thing I'm going to do is bring a child in this world in poverty. I wasn't going to do that. I was broke in 2006, 2007, 2008. I was not bringing a child in this world while yeah, I was but, broke. 
the thing is poor people tend to have more kids it's like a whole psyop this like you need a certain amount of money to have children um my friend like we kind of broke down we did an episode on this on my show i don't know how broke you were so maybe, maybe that was it but i i i do think there's a lot of propaganda telling people they can't afford kids um when if you homeschool the kids if you you really just need like low food costs, low clothes costs, and then you can hand them down. Like my, my friend's a stay at home mom that kind of like broke this down. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had a felony. I hit a cop in 1998. I mm -hmm. couldn't get a job. Yeah. So, so it was mm -hmm. it would have been very, very difficult. You know, um, mm -hmm. th by the way, this is before numerology. So I try to hear how yeah. come you see this coming? Okay, this is way before numerology. Right. So uh, no, well, I'm no. not saying for you, but I kind of understand like the religious point of view behind it, because you're kind of playing God when you're like, you know, like pulling out like birth control. Like, I mean, you're, well, you're not, well, if you're pulling out, how are you playing God? Um, because like because again you're yeah, you're, you're not supposed to you're not supposed what, to what, what, what do you mean you're not supposed to well hold on hold on hold what's on a second purpose, what, what do you suppose what's the purpose of having what, sex what, what, yeah like if you're going to what, 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 what's the point <laughs> you're going to have 20 30 kids I can't <laughs> no. afford 20 30 kids well well people used to do it like my uh, my 20 30 well my I'll give you an example so my my dad is the son of a fireman and on a fireman's salary they had 13. 13 and so, kids. And so, like, yeah, feminism, okay. really, like, this okay. is all part of feminism. It's, like, to, to have to get married in your later to late 20s and have two kids. Like, two kids is feminism. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this abundantly clear. Mm -hmm. If I had to have 20 to 30 kids, hang me right now. <laughs> okay, you can hang me right now because I ain't dealing with that stuff. That's too much for me. Other people might be able to do it. Other people... You know, yeah, that, but, that's fine. But my, I'm not doing it. Right. But my, my point more is that like a hundred years ago, the average was five. And before that, it was even more. So it's like and we have a higher standard of living now than we did a hundred years because ago. Because we have less kids. Well, yeah, part, partially. Yeah. But yeah. but like the thing is, like people used to kind of make it work. Like people used to do hand me downs. They used to do like you eliminate a lot of costs by not buying new clothes. But like my my friend got chickens, right? I got you. Uh, you. You know, there's there's ways around there, this there's, stuff. There's there's yeah. ways to do it, but is that the type of life you want to live? Well, I mean, that's the, the well. It, it, but wait, wait, wait. The quality so, of life matters, right? Well, I mean, not always. Like a lot of quality like, of life doesn't it, matter. Not not always because it's not a, it's it not doesn't. about you. Is the point? It's about the family. It's about reproducing as much as possible. Like you know, in, in certain cultures, right? How many so, kids do you want? Um, I mean, I always said when I get married, it's just as many. Like I've never wanted to like plan it. Like I've just wanted once I'm married, just see what happens. Hmm. Um, I, I think, you know, I've always thought four. I think maybe I probably wait. Four? Yeah, I, you know, but I think I maybe yeah, I waited. get started. I know that was the problem. I was <laughs> like, I think I waited too long, unfortunately. But, um, you know, we'll see. Hopefully, you know. <laughs> four, four? I mean, um, I'm, I'm cool with two. Yeah. I'm cool. I'm packing up shop. <laughs> I'm done. And by the way, the highlight of my day is when I'm home and when I wake up, and the kid comes in the morning, mm. gives me a hug, and says, Daddy, I love you. Well, that is the highlight of my day. Everything after that is downhill. Well, I'll, I'll tell you one thing, too. It's also um, leading to a lower IQ population because richer people have less kids. So the population... But, but, but just because they're richer doesn't necessarily mean they have higher IQs. Uh, yeah, but it correlates. Like That's the number one indicator of lifelong success is IQ. Number two is... I know, I know plenty of smart people who are broke. No, I, I'm, I'm, I understand there's exceptions, but mm -hmm. we're talking about general trends, right? And people that are smarter tend to make more money in general. I, I, I so, mean, so it's leading, there's a lot of women right now who are making a lot more money than men, which you said before. So what that basically says is, no, not the smarter well, people are I'll making tell it. You, well, I'll tell you one thing about women is that is that is another problem is that women make more money and then we don't reproduce. Um, so a lot of higher IQ, I would yes. say a lot of higher IQ women don't reproduce. Yes, that would probably be a big problem because they've been brainwashed by feminism. Right. But what, I'm, what's the 90% now? Uh, college educated women initiate divorces? Um, not that they, when they do divorce, yeah. they do initiate yeah. it. Of yes, course. yes. Of course. But you got to be smart to make money. Um, I, I would say. I, I don't not, think. I don't not, think not if you're. I don't think if, if you're. If you're a woman and you got a big rack 
and you got a nice yeah. ass, all you got to do is put that shit on OnlyFans. The, you're gonna make issue, money. The, There's nothing about smart. The, issue, the, the smart guys yeah. are the ones who invented the computer, like, invented the internet. Those who are all men, and the women are taking advantage of that. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you an example. Like in corporate America, you see these like women walking around like they own the place. They're not really that smart when you talk to them. They're kind of dummies. You know what I mean? Especially you, you were just in the D.C. area. There's a lot of stupid women making a lot of money out there. But it's just because these corporations are... are re so there's some truth to what he's saying. Like these corporations do reward women for basically like doing nothing because they have diversity hires, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it's kind it does skew it a little bit, but, you know... No, it, it just kind of depends on the industry. But yeah, there are some. I, I met this one chick and she told me to go into tech. This is a couple of years ago. And I couldn't figure out how this girl, this was this stupid, was making so much money. She was mm -hmm. like, she made like 110000 And this was like five years ago. So it was less inflated. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how the hell is this bitch? making so much money it didn't click until five years later when they fired everyone at twitter what happened when the rubber met the road at twitter right mm -hmm. and they needed to make money because they were losing money they fired all the women all these you know white ladies in hr telling all the men no, 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 no. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, I, I, i've never had a woman boss no they're not no, great yeah no. they're, I, I don't i don't think i ever will in all honesty yeah and even even the way i've structured like my company like i the well, men, i do have the a wife I, well I, let me rephrase that <laughs> i do have a wife so i do have a little bit of a boss <laughs> so let me rephrase that a little no, bit <laughs> even even the like everything i've been starting like I, my you know men are in management in general you know i'm not saying there could never be a woman that's the exception but i, I knew like as a woman i can't handle stress the same way men handle stress nor do i think it, you should no i i don't want to and so it's like nice if shit hits the fan to just be like, all right, tell me what I'm supposed to do, you know. Um, I think naturally that you know you got smart women and smart men. Intelligence, I think, is not ascribed to your gender, but your gender. Well, w women are much less intelligent than men as a whole. Their brains are 15 percent smaller. They're much more emotionally based. Men are much more logically based. Now, are you going to tell me there's not a woman out there who's very logical? Of course there are. I've met them, but it's it's very rare. Okay. You know, it's it's like finding well, it a it's like finding roles. a virgin in four hours. It all depends on the roles that we're given because physically, a man is stronger than a woman. You know, and so. The man, the woman has got to be submissive. She should be submissive. What about your brother? That doesn't seem to be the case with him. Meaning? Well, I mean, it looks like Michelle Obama's running the show. Yeah, but that's his thing, you know. Was he always w w was he always a weak man? Well, he was to me. He was always effeminate, you know. Like he was always like soft and a nice guy. Always a nice guy. Was he raised by yeah. a single mother? Uh, yeah. He had no strong father figures? No. Is that why he's a Democrat? Shoot, that's hard to say. <laughs> yeah. But Democrats are like that. They're kind of soft people. They're into anything and everything, you know. And uh, they, 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 they believe in everything. They believe in everything, you know. Anything goes, you know. But I don't believe that that's the way it's supposed to be because there's some things that are meant for some people, like. <laughs> You can't have a woman, you know, lifting weights. I mean, she lift weights, yeah, but there's there's a level at which she can't go any further, you know. And when when they start taking steroids, <laughs> yeah, you know. So there's some things that are meant for every, every each and every one of us naturally, you know. So, but right now people are trying to make things manufactured and they're fitting it to be what they want it to be, as opposed to what it's supposed to be. And that's what's messed up everything and everything in the world right now, because we don't know the parameters, we don't know the limits. Because you can't have even your rights, like my rights here, they will only go as far as my arm goes. Because when you stretch it out, then there's going to be a clash. So I got to give you some space when I'm doing like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we got to know where our parameters are. And the only way to know that is when you're brought up well, properly, the right kind of values. Or you have people puppeteering you. When I, when I look at your brother, he's born 1961, the year of the ox. When did he come to power? 2009, 2009. the year of the ox. Mm. So it, it's always there. 
It's always there. What you know? I look at your brother. Uh, he was 47 years old when he became president of the United States. Four and seven, eleven. He's born eight four, nineteen sixty one. Eight four one nine six one adds up to twenty nine two nine eleven. When I always look at certain things, the people in power always have it. Mm -hmm. I always tell people there's basically three numbers when it comes to this game. The top guys, top women usually have three numbers. Number one, eleven. But do you think that he's the power behind all this? Or this no, some, no. I think else, I think I think Valerie like Jarrett. I think I don't think there's a few people out there, or or a council. Valerie Jarrett there. is basically his handler. Have you ever met Valerie Jarrett? No. Okay. Well, he he kept her far away from you. Uh, Valerie Jarrett is a Barack Obama's handler. I believe she gets uh, her orders from the Rothschilds. Okay. I believe that. I cannot prove that, but that's what I believe. Um, when I saw that your brother is the first president in U.S. history who left the White House but didn't leave Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I wonder why Barack's staying in D.C. after Trump went in office. Because every other president went on, you know, to our vacations. Mm -hmm. He's got four mansions. He can go all over the place. He stayed. Why? Because he was running the deep state. Mm -hmm. He was the one who was running the whole operation. He kneecapped Trump's presidency with fake Russia investigations, fake investigations all sorts of bullshit but broke yes broke man right yeah he's full of shit mm. do you do you have any respect left for your brother no, no i don't no when did you lose it what, what was the final draw uh i lost it when he when he left office 216 for eight years mm -hmm. you know i've been supporting him you know how many times have you been in the white house Many times. And you were there supporting him through thick and thin? Through thick and thin. And then he left the White House. What happened? Got nothing back. You know, he just left. He's like, there was nothing to Why me. couldn't he give you a job? Because I mean, you are his brother. Said, I mean, my brother works for me. He said I wasn't a citizen. What does that matter? I don't know. because You have a green card, yet, don't you? Since 1985. You have a, you've been in this country since 85? Since 1985. Okay, so. And I was working. You know, and he tells me that I don't, I'm not a citizen. I said to myself, that's the first time when I got a, you know, that alarm went off. I said, this guy, something wrong with him. Pearl, could you imagine that your brother or sister was the president of the United States and they wouldn't even try to give you a job? I mean, w would that bother you? It's not really that I wanted a job. I just wanted to be of assistance, you know, to be by his side, you know, to help him out. I said, look, I'm a Muslim. I might could help you with these, these Muslims over there. You know, JFK and RFK, mm -hmm. they were together. They were yeah, helping yeah. each other. You know? I mean, sometimes that's what so, I wanted. So, sometimes brothers are together, like yeah. the Tate brothers. I, brother. I don't like the Tates, but you got to respect the bond that Tristan and Andrew have together. Then you have other pieces of shit like Logan and Jake Paul. Mm. Uh, uh, listen, um, I, I think Logan is the biggest piece of fucking shit on this planet. I kind of like Jake. I think, you know, I, I look at Jake, he seems like a stand-up individual. He's fighting for UFC fighters to get better health contracts and pay. He's actually done more for the sport of boxing uh, than anyone else since Floyd Mayweather. So he's done it, but I look at Logan and I'm like, wow, what a selfish individual. He basically went on a podcast and said, I'm a better boxer than you, even though he got his ass whooped twice. And Jake's out here knocking people out. Like, what the hell? Yeah, I, I didn't see the fight. I don't know what they You're did. not a Jake Paul fan, <laughs> no, are you? No, I don't really care. I'm like, eh. I got you. I don't I know got much you. Do you know who Paul Jake Paul brothers? is? No. Do you know who Andrew Tate is? No. <laughs> I know, I know I the Tates, know obviously. Yeah, yeah. No, he does it. He does it. Yeah. And, and by the way, by the way, Tates, this is a man from Kenya. He never heard of you. Uh, do they know who Gary the Numbers guy is in Kenya? Yeah, they do. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Mwah, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 you know, um, when I look at everything that's going around uh, in society today, it's honestly what Pearl says. I, you can say it a hundred times. It's feminism. It's We need to repeal 19. Uh, and by the way, I think that shirt's going to sell like hotcakes. <laughs> Repeal 19. You're gonna, let's make that shit mainstream, bro. Yeah. It, it's, it, 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 just like they said, make America great again in 216. Yeah. Repeal 19 in 2004. Are you with it, Malik? I'm with yes. you. Yes. 
and and honestly it's for our own good because it's na- it's messing with the natural order of the world they're telling us we can make decisions like men we're not meant to make decisions like men we're not meant to live life like men do and when we do it leads to our own unhappiness so i i think it's just back to like women are dummies women. Oh, that's gonna that's gonna ha- be have you have you, met, have you have you met any intelligent women yeah. In your opinion? Oh yeah, I just say as a group, we're kind of dummies. Okay. But even intelligent, what percentage? But even intelligent women, I will say, are still stupid when it comes to mate selection. I would say like most women at some point have made dumb decisions when it comes to like mate selection, even smart. Wh- ones. Why? Why do you think they do that? Is it because of lust? Is it because of pure pressure? Why? I think it? women would rather be. There's a couple things. Like, I think in the old days, right, you'd watch MTV, like, a music awards, whatever it was, and you realize that was not real, right? Now we have women that have access to these celebrities, right, and these entertainers. And it's so crazy when I ask girls on the show about their exes, how many are, like, rappers, entertainers, whatever it is. And so it's like we have access to these men, and we think it's real life, but it's not. And we have access. It's like the women would rather be the king's concubine than the peasant's wife. But now we have access to all the kings. That's never happened. How, what percentage of women do you think would rather be the king's concubine? Um, we talking I, about 50, I, 80? I think most women would rather be the king's concubine. Uh, maybe like, I think 100% of women. No, yeah. I disagree with that. I, I think There's most no way women, it can't be 100%. Um, I mean, but remember, like, what what is the king, right? Women value different things. So, what, what are the top so, three things, in your opinion, that women value? Money was one of them. Um, probably piping them down, good is another one. What's yeah. the third? I think nowadays, like, a strong masculine leadership is so rare. God, that's so rare. You do you actually want a man telling you what to do. Mm-hmm um what if you think that he's making a bad decision do you speak up or do you be submissive um well i'm gonna be like you know being who i am it's am i am i gonna struggle with that yeah probably but i think at the end of the day i've learned it's like really nice to just know it's on him and not me that's just like what I've, ah, I understand. Yeah. So, so it's like okay if i if i don't agree i might give you my take but it's like at the end of the day it's it's nice to know that like I don't have to stress out about the outcome of the decision. It's on him. It's not me. I see. Um, you don't want pressure on you. No, I don't handle pressure super well. Do you think women handle pressure well? No. 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 And even that's why I say even me. Like I'm not. I'm not saying I'm gonna do this perfectly, right? And that's why I think people get irritated because they're like, Pearl, why aren't you this like? create like super feminine woman da, 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 da. i'm not saying i'm probably going to struggle with it too but it's like if we can't agree but at on, least you know what the right thing is yeah and that's what i'm saying if we can't agree on what the ideal is then how do we improve as women we can't like right now we can't even have a conversation as women to say hey the ideal is to not nag your husband the ideal is to trust him this is what we are striving the ideal is to stay in shape not get fat like this is what we're striving for but it's like i can't even have a conversation like a conversation with women and say hey guys we should listen to our husbands without them saying well but are you gonna do it probably not perfectly Mm. probably not but you know all we can really do is do the best we can and try to improve there's some women out there who won't stop they'll keep talking they won't shut up do you think in the 18 and by the way this is going to be controversial do you think in the 1800s um women were more subservient because they knew if they got out of the line they might face physical punishment do you think that in itself might have um kept them in check <laughs> maybe a little bit but there was also um they had like a contraption they had like um, that chastity you, belt no no they had a contraption to like put over women's like mouths if they nagged too much what was that called i i can't remember i tweeted it though there was like a picture like literally and, oh, shit, and husbands, I'm learning something new today husbands, Malik. husbands could have prosecuted their wives for nagging too much i mean men are naturally benevolent men like naturally they don't want to you, really you, you, like you can prosecute your wife for what nagging yeah nagging Oh, 80% of you bitches would be in prison. But women also could prosecute her husband for not not paying all the bills. It went both ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It went both ways. 
and uh, <laughs> sounds like Islam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and and so, but a lot of times we look at these institutions and say they were so crazy instead of like asking why they were the way they were. I think that's like the worst mistake in history is looking at it through the lens of today instead of the lens of the time. And and the truth of the matter is, us women, like we just hold on to things. I don't know what. Like I'm not even saying I don't do it, but it's like for some reason, women love bring it. I know, past, I know, they? I know. We do. We're like they the CEOs the, of what I, happened. I, I, yesterday a, 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 a woman will do something I know, wrong I know. and then she'll bring up whoa you did that five years ago you did that 10 years ago and this is what i realized if we hold on to too much i see women go crazy in their 40s like 40s to 50s because it's like 20 Midwife years crisis? no it's like um i think it's like the demons taking over them i, I have weird views on it but like because like think about the anger that builds up if you're really you have to forget like in life, you just have to forget the mean things that people have done to you because otherwise you're just going to be angry, especially women at least. And the you thing don't believe in revenge? Um, not in a marriage, I don't. Okay, I think I'll like, yeah, I I, what you're and like, I think men are meant to fight, women aren't. And I and I think like not all men. Like, <laughs> but, well, yeah, like, but I think like women, we're we're supposed to be like selfless. Like that's what we're our goal anyway. Because we cannot hold on to anger. We cannot remember like trauma, traumatic things like men can. And so I just noticed when women have spent twenty years thinking about every single thing their husband has done wrong, the husband becomes a shell of a guy, or he's not a, like the king of his own house, and the woman just becomes crazy because she hasn't any anyone to check her for 20 years and tell her that she's insane and we're all insane malik as a man who's had uh many wives we won't name the number but you've had many wives as it's allowed in africa and islam um have you noticed what she's saying is true no she's uh, she's telling the truth it's just it's the way it's supposed to be and that's an it's natural like that because the man is the dominant he's supposed to have express his dominance. Not even that is natural, it's supposed to be like that. And like I'll say that sometimes the problem is with women, you know, they sometimes they don't accept that. And then when you're like on top of them, they get really upset. You know? so on top of them literally? Yeah, literally. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so every time when I'm having a thing with one of them, I say, look, I didn't make you. We were made this way. So don't blame me. Because I think they have that. That's a lo that's logical. That usually doesn't work with them too well. Yeah. Well, I think this is that. Yeah, you have to you have to talk in emotional ways sometimes for a woman to actually well, understand. Well, and and I honestly think that our emotions most of the time are from the devil because it's like sometimes you'll just You're get like really, this. You're really really religious, yeah. aren't you? I'm not, no, no, it's crazy. I'm, it's not even. Of, it's not it even like, like a religion uh, thing. It's just like I don't know when I when I think about things like logically. I this is just I, well the best a woman can right. <laughs> but like when I just think these things through, it's like, you know, I, I think most women like in a breakup or what, like this is what we see women spite in breakups today. Right. When they when they take the kids, when they take the house, they mm -hmm. take all this shit. And I'm like that, that obviously can't be from God. Right. It's got to be from the devil. So it's like women like I think the devil literally uses women to abuse the men because that's the way the devil can get to the men. And that's why you see all these like statues where they're like, like I saw that statue in New York of the woman holding the man's head. You're like, that, it's like, and even like there was a um, Medusa, there's some tribe in India oh, where literally, out the head, yeah. yeah, there is um, this tribe in India where literally they would sacrifice men to the, like Kali, the go goddess Kali. And you'll see these like um, things like reiterated in the magazines and like just in a modern day, like thing, like, I don't know, symbolism, whatever. But like that tribe was known for being really violent and they sacrificed men. Other men <laughs> would go get the simps, right? Would go get the other men and sacrifice the men to the goddess Kali. Yeah, and I just, I think it's, yeah. And I, cause I just think of like the angriest I've been in my life. And it's like weird. It's like something's like over you, like you're so mad. And so it's like, that can't be from God. That's gotta be from the devil. And as a woman, you just kind of have to know, like, just wait, it'll pass, it'll go away. Like don't, yeah. Um, when it comes to you and your relationships, do you follow a lot of the same advice that you're actually giving people when they listen to you? I do. 
I do. But you're not a hypocrite. But well, I mean, sometimes, hell yeah. Aren't we like all? sometimes like sometimes I get mad, you know, it's like, you know, I'm I'm human. I, I don't think I'm like the perfect example of a feminine woman. No. I wish I was, but at the end of the day I, I was I was an athlete. Like I, I spent most of my life in a gym and I you know, I do the best I can. But again, I just think it's like a dangerous territory when we can't even acknowledge the idea. Like as a man, like, you know, most men can say, Hey, take care of all the bills, but some guys still have their woman work part time, but they can say, Hey, taking care of all the bills is the ideal. They can say being in the best sh shape, fighting, being strong. That's the ideal. Even if sometimes, you know, maybe they got a beer belly, maybe they're not like men can at least acknowledge like what the ideal is in general. Like there's some iffiness women. It's like, we can't even acknowledge the ideal without going viral. <laughs> <laughs> like to say, you know, you know, I'm not a virgin, but like, I think a virgin is the ideal. I think getting married younger is the ideal. It's like, you know, um, but I, I don't understand why as women, we can't acknowledge what the ideal is and try to work our way to it. Is it, it well, I mean, most people probably have different ideals though. Well, I think we live in La La Land. I think like for women. Yeah, women and, definitely live in La La, yeah, La Land. Yeah, you know, uh, unfortunately we're just dummies, <laughs> you know? And I, I say that like tongue in cheek, but like we've just had a hundred years of propaganda brainwashing us. Um, you know, people may, like men may have slightly different ideals, but I think the, the, the core is still the same. Protect your woman, provide for your woman. But we can't even say as women, the ideal is a virgin. Like how crazy is that? That's like the one thing that was required for marriage. And we can't even agree. We can't even say, look, ladies, I know none of us waited. All right. But that's the, that's what we should have did. Like we have grown. I just saw grown like 45, 50 year old women um, giving their advice to like younger women on TikTok. And they all said to date around. That's what they all said. A 45 year old. Yes. Yes. This is the older women don't help us. And that's why it's like we can't even get advice from the wives because we have like we have such a generation of shitty wives. The the women between the ages of like 40 and like 55 ish, they might have stayed married or been married for a while, but they were not good wives. They they had the propaganda and the eight like the really heavy propaganda campaign in the 70s and the 80s. They're not they're not good wives, and most of us really don't have much we can learn from them. Unfortunately, most of them went to college. Most of them, if you say hey, because this is where you can really see it, where like a woman's headspace is at. Do you obey your husband? And, you know, those women, most of them don't say yes. They say no. Should and, should a woman obey her husband if he's a broke ass bitch? Uh, if that's who she picked, unfortunately, you know, I, I, I believe in, you know, for no, richer, what, for what, poor. What, 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 what if she picked a, a, a person who showed a lot of potential? But when she got to know him, he was actually lying about. Well, that I mean, stuff. I'm I'm Catholic. Well, uh -huh. oh, he was lying. Yeah. I think we can actually get. There, there's a lot of men yeah, out I, there who pretend to be rich, who pretend to know. actually have things they don't, and um, then the women find out and they're like, well, "Oh, okay, well, you're a fraud." I mean, I mean, I guess what is broke, right? Is this unemployed? You didn't notice he was unemployed because the average man makes forty five thousand a year and he goes up to seventy thousand. That's average. The average woman, remember, it, it's not like we. You know, we're, we're not, we're not on a, like, it's kind of like get off your high horse. Like the average woman isn't a virgin. The average woman's overweight. And yet you're demanding all these crazy things, you know? Um, so the average 90% of women have been on birth control. Our fertility's probably fucked up. Our hormones are probably fucked up. But what up. about the men who are actually telling their women to take these damn pills? Um, I mean, I, I don't think they should, you know, I'm, okay. I'm not like, but I'm, I'm Catholic. So it, it, I'm not the, you know, they'll be like, oh, pearls, you know, I'm not the best Catholic, but I, but I am Catholic. I, I'm so. Jewish. <laughs> I haven't know, been in know? temple in 10 years. But, but it's like, you know, marriage is supposed to be for richer, for poor, for better, for worse and sickness and in health. And like, I, I do believe when you take those vows, you're not supposed to get divorced. It, if, so, if a man cheats on a woman, should she stay with him? Yeah, sorry. Like, really? it, it might, I don't think he should cheat, but, you know, I, I think, again, you know, we, we have to get off our high horses. Like, come on, you weren't a virgin on your wedding okay. day. You could have, we could have picked monogamy uh -huh. at 21 and gotten married. We didn't pick monogamy. Um, but So, so yeah, you my, think... My it, thing is this, let me just... Oh, hold on, let me finish. Yeah. You think it's okay for a man to cheat around and possibly bring STD back no, to his wife. No, I don't I don't think it's okay. I don't think he should do that, but But if he if he does do that, you're staying by his side. <laughs> Okay, well, what are you going to do with a fucking STD on the dating market? You might as well stay at that point. 
fucked. <laughs> like, Ooh. now, like, what are you going to, you know what I mean? Like, now you're going to go back out there with an I, STD. I, 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 that's I, I, better. I, per- personally, <laughs> I, I probably slit the person's throat. But yeah. that's just me. Well, I, and I'm not advocating for cheating. But what I'm saying is, like, you know, let's, let, what if we accounted uh, getting attention from other men as cheating? Like, what if we accounted flirting with another man as cheating? Because attention is to women, as to sex is to men. We cannot live without attention. Mm -hmm. Men can't live without sex. So, you know, what if we counted flirting with the personal trainer? What if we Mm -hmm. counted answering a DM from someone else? What if we counted even just posting a selfie on Instagram? Make make sure that personal trainer is a woman. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I agree with you. But you know what I mean? It's like our- Ounce uh, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Make sure you don't put the those people in those Correct. situations. I, I agree with you. But my whole point is like a lot of times women will be like, oh, he's the devil. He cheated. It's just horrible. And we allow women to make such victims of ourselves just being like oh you have such a poor you poor thing he's just evil when it's like okay you never cheated really like you never flirted with someone else you never you're, 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 you're acquiring never, flirting to cheating i i yeah i think yeah. for a woman yeah accepting yeah. attention from another guy is cheating I, I don't think it is as much for, yeah, for a guy. Well, yeah. I, so I, I, I don't think unless a woman builds an emotional bond with another person or she's well, fucking another person. Well, let's talk I don't about, I don't let's, see that okay, as an but issue. Let's let's take emotional bonds. Usually women nowadays have like like I, I honestly think women nowadays aren't even monogamous because they usually have two or three guy friends, even in America. like we're in a society where we can't tell the difference between wives and single women. Uh, you know, in normal like you could kind of tell the difference. The women would roll like the single women women would have the short skirt and then they get married they put it away now you can't even tell the difference so if we're going to count dressing provocatively is seeking attention from other men mm-hmm. the same way like if a guy flirted with the waitress you, you would be mad but women can dress half naked which is clearly asking for attention and nobody mm-hmm. cares and mm-hmm. so my my whole point is like you know make sure your side is clean before you start whining about what the men are doing. And I think for 90% of women today to say you you never crossed a line ever when you were married, I I think it's a bit silly to throw away the whole marriage when women have a lot harder time remarrying, right? Um, Instead of figuring a way to work it out and marriage is supposed to be about forgiveness. You you know, um, in astrology, uh, one thing I realized is there's some signs that will put up with cheating and there's some signs don't. So take notes, guys. Uh, I'm going to put this out there. If a woman is born in a goat year, she'll put up with cheating. She will literally put up with people cheating. And I'm going to uh, give you an example. Anna Nicole Smith. Everyone knows who that bitch is. She married a 90-year-old billionaire. And by the way, Anna Nicole Smith is born on the 28th. She did get that bag, didn't she? But the, the fact of the matter is... You know, when, when you look at these women and you look at everything they're doing, um, I, I kind of disagree with what you said. I don't think people should be cheating. But if you're going to go that route, learn numerology and astrology. First of all, if you cheat on a rooster, it doesn't matter if you're a millionaire. It doesn't matter if you're flat broke. They'll cut you. Okay. Uh, Lauren Bobbitt, uh, I think the one who cut off her dude's thingy, that was she was born in the rooster year. But if you look at other signs like goats, again, as long as the man is providing money and giving them a, a luxury lifestyle, they'll put up with it. Mm. There's certain things people have to understand. Mm -hmm. And and this is why I keep telling people knowledge is power. Think of all the people in this world who are putting up with garbage. You don't have to do it. You just have to put understand how to learn this knowledge and apply it. It's not just about knowing things. It's actually about applying things Mm. in everyday life. You know, um, when I look at a guy like Mr. Beast, um, I personally believe that he was put on because I look at the tra- uh, his little logo, pink, blue, and white, and I look at the transgender fag, uh, flag, pink, blue, and white. I think at some point down the line, do cut a deal because he has no charisma and he's the top guy out there. But the numerology tells me he's a three life path. And three is the number of communication. Communication starts with C, three is the right letter. Zerk is a three. You know, uh, Rolo's a three, Sartain's a three, Mm. Uh, uh, a whole bunch of people out there 
who basically are three life paths run their freaking mouths. I mean, e even in the past, Rush Limbaugh, people know who he was. Yeah. Howard Stern and Rush Limbaugh are born on the same exact day. The two people who were supposedly the kings of all media before, you know, people like Pro took over <laughs> and all this internet stuff, they were the kings of all media. They were born on the same day, the 12th, one and two is three. So when you look at stuff like that, you start understanding, okay, this is making sense why people are a certain way. But it doesn't just stop there. There is, people have to learn this stuff. I'm just telling you, I just look at all these people with all these problems and I'm like, God damn, I'm fucking smart as hell. Because I figured all this stuff out and I never had these problems. I mean, listen, my girl was damn near a virgin. Okay, I didn't have these problems as you guys did. I, I, I don't even, I, I've been going on trips for 10 years and I leave for a week, two weeks, do business, make money for the family. I don't ever worry that my girl is cheating on me, ever. And she knows I'm not fucking doing anything because I'm not about that life. Mm -hmm. Some people are, you know, um, some people like the Tates, they're tigers. Tigers live their lives like those two. They're supposed, you know, being all alpha, all masculine, halfway a bodybuilder, a freaking fighter. This is what tigers do. And if you're gonna be with the tiger, don't expect them to be faithful. <laughs> that that's just the bottom line. Some signs will be faithful to the freaking end. Roosters are oh so fucking uh, so so loyal. And I married a rooster partly because of it. Mm. This is the stuff people have to understand. And if you do that, life just gets so much more simpler. I have problems like everyone else, but not those type of problems. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, Malik, I want to ch change gears for the last uh, 20 minutes that we have here. And I want to get a little bit more political. Um, what role do you, do you believe your brother right now has in the Democratic Party? Do you believe he's still a shot caller or not? I think he is, yeah. He's still a shot caller. He has a lot of influence. And my thing is that whatever he says is what goes. Uh, when I look at uh, President Trump, um, there's a long list of people who worked for him, a, a lot of them unjustly, got you know hit with subpoenas got hit with indictments some of them went to prison and again this is all political i get that there's not one person who worked for your brother who got locked up not one now we know your brother's corrupt as hell Surind Surlindra, fast and the furious the money he sent to iran he sent his brother sent 1.5 billion dollars in unmarked bills to Iran. Why do you think someone like that would do something like that, bro? I got no idea. <laughs> because they're cleaning money. Because see, in America, we have laws here. And it's very, very difficult for politicians to steal money. But do you know why the politicians are so benevolent with your money and your money and my money? Because when they send it overseas, those laws aren't there anymore. So basically, um, his brother sent all that money to Iran. Guess who Iran kicked back some of that money to? Barack Hussein Obama. Think about it this way. Uh, there was a war in Afghanistan for 20 years. 20 years. They pulled out August 2022. They pulled out. No, I'm sorry. 2021, they pulled out. Mm -hmm. Within six months, there's a war in Why? Because one money laundering operation came to an end. They need to start a new one in All of these politicians are dirty as hell. Every single one of them. And I, I, I and again, I voted for Trump in two six. I, I didn't vote for him because I'm a felon and I'm not allowed to vote. But I convinced thousands, about thousands of people to vote for Trump in 216 and 220. But guess what? Can't do it in 2024. Can't do it. The wrong year. Exactly. Because of what I believe in. Donald J. Trump is born 1946, the year of the dog. If he becomes president in 2024, that's his enemy year. That's not good. That's not good. So now I'm in a very difficult position mm -hmm. because 
obviously I want to vote for the conservative and the other you know side is a bunch of pedophiles and a whole bunch of other nonsense but I know what's going to happen if Trump goes in office same thing that happened with George W Bush George W Bush came to power in 2000 mm -hmm. that was a dragon year he's born the same year as Trump 1946 mm -hmm. under his watch the Great Recession under his watch 9-11 his presidency was a complete freaking failure complete freaking failure we have an obama because of a bush mm -hmm. and we had a donald trump because of obama the only way republicans can actually defeat this basically coalition of sexuals feminists a whole bunch of other bullshit. the only way it's gonna happen if we do it on a state level state by state by state they can't do it on a federal level they have to do it at the state level they have to pass laws in every single state that says we will check every single vote not once not twice we have something called blockchain we have something called crypto right now why can't we vote the same way there's too many dead people voting and the problem is all of these bastards are always voting for the Democratic Party. Right. Every single time it goes, every time there's a cheating scandal, anytime there's some kind of dead person voting, it's always going for Democrats. Why don't conservatives cheat back? <laughs> I, I, I've i been trying to figure that out for a long time. <laughs> oh, that's our problem. We're too, like, moral and principled. Yeah, I, I, I'm done with that. <laughs> I used to believe that stuff 15 years ago. Oh, no, it doesn't matter what they did. We got to be better than them. I don't believe that shit at all anymore. That I, I was brainwashed to believe that. I don't believe that shit at all anymore. If they're playing with fire, then you're playing with fire. Like they bring out a knife, you bring out a bigger fucking knife. You have to get it to the point, like a CIA agent once told me, you kill one of mine, I'm taking a fucking hundred of yours. Mm. That's how it has to be. Because when you project power, you don't have to use it. Uh, you know, uh, look at uh, a guy, uh, like his bodyguard. Mm -hmm. That's a big boy. That's a big boy. You think anyone's coming up to him and saying, yo, get the fuck out of my way? No one's going to say shit to him. And it doesn't even matter if he can fight. He's intimidating. So by the fact of the fact that he's intimidating, that itself is strength. Mm -hmm. Because people won't test you. Mm -hmm. And that's why America must remain the superpower in the world. It has to happen because I'm going to I'm really, really worried that my kids and grandkids will grow up under CCP rule. That is one of the most frightening What's things. That? Chinese Communist Party. Oh. I'm very, very concerned because to me, that is the greatest evil after feminism on the planet right now. It was the CCP. These people. They own everything. They want people to have social credit scores. Like, for instance, if you're in China and you have a bad social credit score, you can't go in a store to buy food. Mm. This is to the point they want to bring it here. They want that society here. And communists and socialists always say the same fucking bullshit over and over. You bring up the case of the Soviet Union that failed. You bring up the case of Venezuela that failed. You bring up all of these cases and these these freaking morons will keep telling you, oh, but it wasn't done correctly. Socialism works, but it wasn't done correctly. Communism works, it wasn't done correctly. I'm gonna tell you right now, one of my heroes in life is General Franco. You ever hear of that guy? Mm -mm. You ever hear of General Franco? He was in Spain. Yes, and I've never been in Spain, so why would he be my hero? Because he fucking put communists in the fucking ground. Anyone who puts communists in the ground, I fucking love you. Because when it comes down to it, I know what communism is. Because my dad escaped communism and he came here and he had a conversation with me when I was eight, nine years old. He told me, Gary, I ran away from the communists. You won't be able to run. There's nowhere else to run. He told me that in the 80s. And he was not an educated man. But he was a very, very smart man. And, you know, when my dad passed, he didn't leave me any money. We, we, we were middle class to below or above at some point. But we're always moving like this. Um, but 
I thank him every single day. It, 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 I start thanking him once I start getting some sense because he came to this country. He came to America. He gave me the opportunity to be in the greatest country on earth. And because I had that opportunity, I became a freaking millionaire. Mm -hmm. I would not have done this in any other country on earth. Flat out. I love this country. But this country needs to be saved. Because if, if it's not saved within the next decade, it's going to be too far gone. It's going to be too far gone. And I really don't know what to do at that point. It was like Brute says, at that point, society is going to destroy itself. And then we're going to go through that same cycle of strong men coming from tough times. And they build their kids up. And all of a sudden, these kids become soft. And the whole cycle repeats, repeats. One thing I always do, I have uh, a 10-year-old and a 4-year-old. I don't allow my boys to cry. I do not allow it. If they want to scream, if they want to get mad, cool. You know, I'll, I'll have a nice talk with them. Like, yo, chill out. Cool. But if they start crying, I get in their fucking face. Don't fucking cry. Do not cry. And I recommend every single dad out there does the same thing to your kids. Do not allow them to cry because, you know, if you're a woman and you cry, people are going to help you. People are going to come. They're going to feel sorry for you. They're going to want to help you. Men are going to want to help you. Women are going to want to help you. You see a man crying. No one gives They've a done fuck. that social experiment, like a man versus a woman crying in public. They did not give a fuck. No one gives guy. a fuck. No. And that's why I want these kids to understand. Get that soft feminism beta shit off just get rid of it because when they grow up and you're not around anymore you can't have them being soft a woman will tear a soft man apart quicker than a fucking criminal just like you said they will take advantage of them and they will fucking destroy him um i my organization is GG33. I basically run a group of about 3,000 people. 85% of my students are men. And I always make sure it's about around that ratio. And the reason I do that is because if you have too many women in one group, they're gonna start fighting. They're gonna start hating each other. Here's the thing about men, and Malik, correct me if you think I'm wrong. No person will want a, a, a want anything but the best for their son if you as a father you want your son to do better than you you as a father you want your son to do the stuff that you did not accomplish in life a woman and a, her daughter i've seen a little bit different i've actually seen mothers be jealous of their daughters because they're better looking than they are yeah it's disgusting that there, there's a ton of moms that are jealous of their daughters that's really common. it's disgusting mm -hmm. it is absolutely disgusting because, because they're single ah. that's why they're not meant to be like they're supposed to have the man they wants attention so either they're not with the man they want and they're looking or they already or they couldn't keep him whatever it is and now they're like think about it um you have a daughter at 20 now 40 year old and 20 year old are in the same club you cannot tell. That's the crazy thing. You can't, you know, you're supposed to move. One's a little more used up, though. Well, <laughs> but that's the crazy thing. Like, you used to be able to tell the difference in the way they dressed between a 40-year-old and a 20-year-old. I can't tell anymore. No, they dress exactly the same. I mean, you can you can tell them the wrinkles, you know what I mean? But, but, but they look exactly the same. It's crazy. Father time is undefeated. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely undefeated. I had a question. Mm -hmm. Why do women have this fascination with their lips? They... I see a lot of women now with these thick lips. They put Botox oh, the, in their what is oh, that? stuff the like filler. that. Yeah, what is that? Because I'm noticing that happening, and mostly well, with these women who have money. Remember, women were dummies. So if they Still just are. yeah, if they just market us anything, we'll buy it. So they got they marketed uh, lip filler to us, and we bought it. 
we're dumb. I find that I find that unattractive. I know. Why would I, I, I that find that? breast implants unattractive. Yeah, yet that. you have a whole bunch of women who do them. Well, I mean, this is why I keep telling people, Pearl. They these red pill guys say these women are crazy. They keep saying, "Oh, yo, these bitches are out there fucking mind." I agree with them, but then they tell them to get breast implants. Then they tell them to take birth control pills. What mm -hmm. the fuck? How is that helping the situation at all? Who tells them to get breasts? I've never uh, heard there, there's quite a few red pill guys that you know oh. tell people to women to enhance themselves any way possible. I mean, hell, if you're Brazilian, they're gonna tell you to put something in your butt. Yeah, I mean, there's Kanye the West's mom mother died. Well, I'll, I'll Kanye, say this. Kanye yeah. West's mother died because of plastic surgery. You know, I'll, I'll say this. Um, there's different strategies that women use to attract different types of guys. And unfortunately, the the guys that women we tend to go for when we're young are the rappers, the ballers, the all that. Like it's just the bad boys. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sort of. And so because of that, you know, they're marketing for the look. And those guys typically aren't seeking long term mates, typically. I mean, are those guys known for being family men in general? the rappers the ball right so so what are they marketing themselves to those guys they want to get with what in this society is the top guys which is unfortunate like we're not you know as women we want what's trendy what's cool and that's what we see right even though let's be honest the businessmen have way more power than any of those guys but you know we're, we're, we're dummies right so so because that's in the media that's what we market ourselves for uh we're about to start wrapping this up pearl give us red flags that guys can look for in women um it's just controversial i think tattoos uh personally um i think yeah, a lot of i mean being fat obviously there's no discipline doesn't like kids um you know i um, went to college but i'd say it's better to get a girl that didn't <laughs> not too smart um and super masculine and argumentative i'd just say yeah um, but especially like tattoos and dressing trashy, I'd say it's like the biggest stuff. Cause I mean, she's just going to embarrass you. Do you think if a woman puts on a bathing suit, that's uh, dressing trashy? Uh, Tough I one. I don't know. Um, I think the more modest the bathing suit, the better. So if she's wearing a thong. Oh God, no! Don't date the bitches with thongs. Yeah, okay, that's, there you that's go. Bad. Yeah, I, I, that's that's where you cross the line. Yeah. Um, what do you think are some red flags in men? I think men that are too invested in like material things is a red flag, personally. So like, the really expensive everything before they can afford it. Like men that aren't good with money. Um, mm, I think most men have God in them. <laughs> God in them. Yeah, I explained this a lot earlier. <laughs> but I just say, I'd say, yeah, that's true. Lazy. Um, no, you know what? Men that have, I'd say the biggest red flag is men that have the spirit of a woman in them. So men that still, listen, the male bitch. Yeah, that listen to women. Yeah, that list still listen to their mother as a grown man. That are afraid of their mother. You know, you don't ever want a guy where it's like he's afraid of his mom as a grown man yeah that's common that, that, that's really common really? that's really common i was just on a podcast Afra the other day. afraid of disappointing their mother no, okay i'll give you an example i was on a podcast the other oh, i feel bad sometimes when people can figure out who these people are but but i was on a podcast you know what i mean <laughs> you've it's been like, on a lot of podcasts you know that it could be anyone but i was on a podcast and this guy she's talking about you bitch you know, yeah mm. <laughs> but but okay he was actually really nice but he had um I gave him the shirt that said women shouldn't vote. I uh -huh. was like, all right, guys, here's a uh -huh. shirt, right? Uh -huh. And he said, well, if my mom saw me wearing that, she'd be pissed. And I'm thinking, well, why do you give a fuck? Red flag right there. Right, and that's, that's what I mean. Like, men, the evil men are the men with the spirit of women in them. So men that like, it's like I can hear it in a guy's voice if he grew up with a single mother. I can't describe it. I don't know how I can tell, but it's like their voice is like an octave higher and they just have feminine like tones. I'm going to get a little trouble for this, but um, there was a time where uh, my mom would uh, call me if she didn't like something I tweeted. And I told her like this, um, you do it again, I'm going to block you. 
and I actually blocked my own mother because she was actually you know going in and started telling me uh, what is this tweet, what is this tweet, what is this tweet, and we came to understanding that she's not going to do that anymore, and she yeah. got unblocked. I do not allow women to tell me what to do. I will say this: my wife was the first person who believed in me when it came to the numerology, astrology that I could actually make it. So I, I again, I have utmost loyalty for that because I believe loyalty is everything. Yeah, no, and I, I agree with you. I don't like think people should cheat. And I, you know, I, I think that at the end of the day, like if you're, if you made a decision your wife disagreed with, she'd still support you, right? Yeah, of course. And that's the point. Mm -hmm. And even- Do you, th do you think most women uh, who disagree with their men will go find another one? Oof. Yeah, or they'll just remind them for a lifetime if it was ever the wrong decision. Because that's the other thing, like, like we feel like we need to tell them, our, and, and I've done this before, so I'm not even, like, claiming that I haven't, but it's like we feel like we need to tell them when they got the wrong decision. He fucking knows. He knows, and you're supposed to support him ever, anyway. You know, you know, sometimes you work for a boss that, that makes a decision where you lose revenue, but you don't quit your job. Well, some people do, but, you know, a lawyer, uh, the best employees don't. Right. Yeah. And by the way, uh, if you are an employer out there looking for people who want to work, hire someone born on the 4th, 13th and 31st, because those are the worker bees in life. Free game out there. Malik. Um, we're about to wrap this up. Do you have any closing uh, thoughts on everything we talked about? Or if you want to say anything else about your brother? No, I just said this is really interesting. This is a great podcast. I really enjoy being here. And uh, I'm impressed with what Pearl has to say. Yeah, she got a mouthpiece on her, doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> She's I good. Support, I support her 100%. And that's why I you, you, that. You're all shy sometimes uh -huh. and stuff. But once you put that mic in front of you, yeah. boom! Well, I mean, yeah. I just I just think the truth speaks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like you just know truth when you hear it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my job is to think about. So, so let me let me <laughs> let me ask you this. Yeah. Say you get married. Yeah. And your husband wants to be an influencer like you. Yeah. Uh, but you're, you're the better one. You're better at talking, influencing. Are you still going to listen to him when he tells you what to do? I gotta, you know, because otherwise, like. But but it, w would you want to listen to a, a man who's being illogical when you are the top person and he wants to say, yo, well, you got to be you know, submissive to me you know, because I'm a man. I mean, I at what point does that argument say? Well, I don't I don't think my ideal is to date someone in the same industry. I'm I just saying you. it's not ideal. Um, just giving you a hype. You but, but hypothetically, mm -hmm. like, I think the only way that the marriage could work is if I listen to him. I think and I think men are logical and over time they kind of see if they're making stupid decisions and adjust. So that mm -hmm. would really be my only You got a lot of faith in men. Um, you know, I don't. You know, I just think like I I think marriage like that's the only way it works. I agree like, with that. So so it's like if that's my bed, it's like fuck, I got to lie in it. <laughs> that was who I picked. You know, <laughs> since you women aren't very good at picking your mates, and I'm saying about this to 95% of women out there, not not you, baby, and you know, my wife, you did a good job, but to the other 95% of women, you, you guys kind of suck at this. Um, is it time to start looking at something else? You know, um, back in the day, they had religious marriages. They do still in some part of the world. At some point, maybe give the astrologers and numerologists a chance to start you know, uh, hooking up people, you know, and things I, of that nature. Honestly, I think that I, I gotta disagree. I think the dads should do it. I think, I think I'd be married if at 18, I just said to my dad, can you find me three guys you think, or five guys, whatever it is that you think, cause women, we gotta feel like we made a choice. Mm -hmm. So you gotta get the dads to give us like five guys to pick from and say, mm -hmm. and then you pick. I, I think that's the best. That's personally my the best way to do. You could do 21, 20, whatever you feel like is the best age for your daughter. But I think the men, da dads have the vested interest in wanting their daughters to not be whores. No, it's kind of 100%. embarrassing to the dad. Un un unless you're Adam 22. Yes. <laughs> well, well, and so they have a vested interest in the like. So they want to pick a husband that their daughter will like. 
they want to pick a husband that will stay like they don't want their daughters in the streets that's embarrassing to them so i i think the best decisions are made when the people with the most to lose help make it and you would think women but we're just dummies and islam <laughs> and islam they have honor killings don't they if if a woman or a daughter is a whore they stone her to death don't they yeah that's how it is. do you agree with that well, that's the way it is yes well, I don't. I mean, I understand that's the way it is. Is that something you agree with, or do you think that's a little bit too far? Like, for instance, in Islam, they say if you steal, you gotta cut off the hand. Why can't you cut off a finger, Pearl? Why do you gotta cut off the whole freaking hand? Well, I mean, well, on. that's what it's in the book. But sometimes, you know, you might because God, Allah, is most gracious, most merciful. You know, I like to always bet on that. That you have to, most gracious, most merciful. Unless, unless you don't worship Him, then He's not too merciful, is He? Yeah. But, he's, but we try to see that you have to, to, to exercise some mercy and, uh, and, and grace. Uh -huh. So, okay, that's what it says. In the, in the, but sometimes you have to use your wisdom according to... Oh, well, I told the, you to think. According to the situation. Mm -hmm. And you know what's funny? It's like this just shows how benevolent men are naturally because you're both like, well, we don't got to cut off his hand. <laughs> no, I, I, like mean, men, I mean, someone else would the, say I'm fucking crazy for trying to think, you know, to cut off a finger. Well, you know, but that's the thing. Men will always police. Like, men are the most benevolent dictators if you just look at the world. Like, not, not if you look if, at Stalin. Not if you no, look at people like that. They were anything but benevolent. He I killed know, 50 million I, people. I, I know. They can not be. I'm not saying they, I'm not saying they don't do evil things. Mm -hmm. But if they do, other men will always police them. That and that's something that women don't do. When a woman's getting like verbally bullied, uh, fuck, no bitches are helping us because oh, we all no. go with the group. Like, you're yeah. just then. Then all the other women join them. It's like when mm -hmm. one friend goes, they all go. <laughs> well, we're gonna wrap this up. I think this was a extremely interesting conversation. Um, Pearl, do you have any final words? No, thanks for having me on. This was fun. Um, Never thought I'd meet Barack Obama's brother. That's kind of cool, Man, you know. <laughs> wait till election season. You're going to meet a lot more people. Well, yeah. Uh, Malik, <laughs> uh, do you have any last words? I just said this was a great discussion, great conversation, and uh, we should try and do this a lot more. Um, I didn't do too much of the numerology and astrology today. We kept it to orange pill content. By the way, that's why I named my stuff orange pill because... We always have orange over here. <laughs> you realize um, that's what the Bitcoiners say. I don't give a fuck <laughs> what they say. By the way, I told everyone to sell their book Bitcoin in January 2022. If you didn't listen to me, I, you broke, bitch. Anyways, this has been a GG33 production. Wrap it up. Okay.